meeting of Tuesday, December 11th, 2018. It is now 6 p.m. And we're going to start off with announcements, open session, and public comment. Um, I'm going to start off by saying that due to certain time restraints, we um, comments for the public to submit to the rail trail uh, is ending um, I don't know, December 26th, December 27th, whatever it is. So we kind of got behind the time eight ball. And so what I'm going to suggest tonight, I know we've received many letters. You guys all done with this stuff? Yeah. Okay. Um, where are they? Did you hand them in? I'm sorry, but I've got to finish. I like to complete what we started before we sorry. start something else. Um, so because it isn't on the agenda and a lot of people don't know, what I'm suggesting is that we take the letters we have received and we collate them. Um, and we co collate them. <laughs> Maybe we do have to start at seven. We collate the ones that we've received and this is where the select board have to listen because if they want to make a comment, make suggestions to have them submitted to town hall really by Thursday, you know, you have, that would mean you'd have Wednesday and Thursday late tonight to, to write your comments and we'll collate them and then as a select board, we will send them in. How does that sound to everyone? Good question. Mm -hmm. um, so when are we going to vote on what gets sent in? Um, we're going to send it all in. What no, do you want to vote on? No, okay. here's, here's the point. And so this has come up in other situations. So we only heard on Monday morning that we have been given an extension, which is why it's not on the agenda. Yeah. And that's allowed under the open meeting law. The chair didn't have any way of knowing this. Friday or so, but yeah, keep going. Okay. So, so what would you like so to do? So the thing is that for us to come across as a board, not just our individual comments, that has clout, right? Yes. That's very different. Yeah. And for us to, we need to see a draft of a letter. We could ask Dan to do yet another thing and draft the letter from our comments. But we need to vote on it in order All for right. it to be sent in. But we are going to be having a meeting right. with FinCom, I hope. So We are, right? Yeah. So, okay, good. So get all your comments in by Thursday. Yeah. We'll collate them. And then uh, Dan could put that on the agenda for our Tuesday meeting. And we can discuss that before or after the Finance Committee. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, good. Because that has more clout. Mm -hmm. Well, I was saying we're going to send it in as a select, but I'm going to guess that we all have pretty much similar oh, oh, oh. comments. So um, that's why I feel we could do that. Anybody want to comment on my comment? Yes. Is that uh, comfortable with everybody? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm asking the audience. If, who, who's here for parking? I mean, for the rail trail. Okay. Good. All right. Um, and Kathleen? Um, my comment is in the Cape Cod Times today, letters to the editor um, with response to the mail that we've been getting. So you can see that there. And um, I did not read the Cape Cod Times today, but if you uh, want, you would probably need to, if you want anything you said included in the group, please send in a copy, email a copy, or send in a hard copy, please. All right, is that good? Clear with everybody? Great. Uh, so any uh, comments, announcements from the board? Kathleen? Um, our recycling committee has um, been successful in instituting a residential food compost bin at the transfer station. Um, this has been a project that's been a long time in the works. It allows residents to take food compost uh, to the dump and dispose of it in a way that will be repurposed. Uh, for gardens in the spring. Um, there's a list of what's acceptable on the bin, and um, they just received their first turkey carcass last week, and they're very excited about that. Um, and please remember to close that bin. But I'd like to thank the Recycling Committee for their efforts on this, and the DPW um, for their um, you know, support in getting this kicked forward. It all goes back to what I heard last night with regard to climate change. Every little thing that we can do uh, makes a difference. So thank you to the Recycling Committee. 
Any other comments from the board? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, thanking two people who have finally given us their formal resignations, which we have to have. I'd like to thank, um, huh, sorry. This is, uh, sorry, it's on another piece of paper. Forgive me. Anyway, it was somebody, there were two people, they resigned. I want to thank them. One, ah, Sylvia Smith has resigned from the wow. personnel board and the finance, finance committee no, NR. and the NRAB. Thank you. And I want to thank her for her years and years of uh, service. And I can't remember the other person. Sorry. Okay. Um, I want to just say uh, congratulations to the holiday stroll and the Christmas lighting event, Christmas tree lighting or tree lighting. Uh, if you went into town on Saturday particularly, probably Sunday too, but Saturday was packed. Did anyone go into town? Yeah, I mean, from the answer. Parking was full. It was freezing cold, but everybody was really happy and walking around. Um, and it was a great event, a very successful event. And I imagine Sunday kind of followed through with that too. Okay, any um, comments, announcements from the audience? Um, two quick announcements, if you would, please. Our Toys for Tots Pro collection toy drive has come to an end. Um, Wellfully collected over a thousand toys that were turned in to help out across the whole Cape with toys. So it was a very successful, and we would just like to thank everybody for the generosity and thank them for that. Also, um, Santa will be visiting the kids this Saturday at 9:30 at the Wellfully Cinema, the Wellfully Police Fire, the East Ham Police Fire, and the cinemas sponsor a free movie, which is going to be incredible too this year. A free gift bag, popcorn, and soda. This is an event we've been doing for over 30 years. It's a great event. Yeah. So it'll be Saturday at 9.30. Incredible, too. So all are welcome. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. And Chief. Um, good evening, Madam Chair. Just a quick announcement, really, for edification of the property owners in town. Uh, I have, uh, in this month's, uh, uh, in this uh, month, uh, no, I'm sorry, the month of November, um, monthly report for the fire department, uh, we received notification from the insurance services office that we were reevaluated. We knew we were being reevaluated for our property protection public classification, and we moved um, from a, a class four uh, slash nine to a class three slash three uh, classification, which is a substantial uh, accomplishment. Um, that classification uh, will be effective on March 1st of next year. But what I've uh, I forwarded information to the board. You'll see that in the next few days. But I would uh, just uh, ask that uh, all property owners in town uh, notify their insurance agents that uh, and their insurance uh, carriers that this uh, classification change is coming for Wellfleet, and hopefully they'll see uh, uh, a little bit better uh, fire insurance rates. So, and uh, the board of water commissioners um, and Barnesville County uh, uh, Communications Sheriff's Office, uh, all our public safety partners were. Uh, very, very uh, uh, helpful in uh, this change. Great, thank you. Uh, Rebecca, yep, you can get up. So just for clarity about the parking issue, should we send in her comments and then next week or next uh, session that will be discussed? What's in the letters or? You and Peter work? wrote such a good note, such a thorough, well, well said, letter, not a note, it's a letter. If you feel you want to add more, um, you could add to that, but we do have your letter, and I would take all the letters that we've received, and they all, again, said many of the same things, but um, we'll even use your letter to start off, because <laughs> it was so good. We come to the next meeting as well to discuss this, or what's the next? Um, you could, yeah. Do you think we'll have the... Uh, rail trail meeting be before or after the um, finance meeting? I would imagine we'll have it before. Okay. Yeah. We'll have it so right six o'clock next Tuesday. Okay. We'll six o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thanks. Okay. Moving on to uh, public hearings. We have a request uh, from Russell Swart to close Marconi Beach Restaurant from mid-November. 28th through late winter of 2019. Uh, any, any of the 
Schwartz or anybody here representing them? Already gone. Yeah, that's okay. Um, can I have a motion from the, or any uh, comment from the board? Yeah, a uh, comment. Uh, next year, perhaps it would be possible well before the time they might think of closing, and I'm all for people closing when they want to close, to have the restaurant owners and whoever wants to close get on an agenda long before they do it, because that didn't happen here. And as the licensing board, I can't hear you. as the licensing board, we shouldn't, we need to approve this, and we need to do it before they close. It's just a formal thing, but other years it's worked better. Yeah, Janet. Okay. Uh, yes, Kathleen. Um, there was a misstep in this, um, and I would like, I agree with Helen that, that we should avoid this next time around. So, yeah. Russ and family have left for Florida, and the business is now on the market for sale. Mm. Yep. Okay, so all in favor of. I haven't uh, made a motion. I know. Yeah, I was going to say all in favor of making a motion. So. I move to approve the closing of the Morcone Beach restaurant from mid November through late winter 2019. All in favor? You want a second? Wait, don't. Oh, yeah. Second. Okay. This is easy. Yes, do you want to go ahead and second? I second. All in favor. Thank you. Moving on. Um, this is for uh, approval of closing at 2 a.m. on New Year's Eve night for the Bomb Shelter Pub. Are there any comments from the board, from the audience? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I move to approve the 2 a.m. closing on New Year's Eve for the Bomb Shelter Pub. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Unanimous. And now we move on to um, PB Boulangerie Bistro. Would like to close from January 2nd of 2019 through February 19th of 2019. Uh, anyone from the audience want to speak to that? Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I'm Eliza Cox. I'm the uh, liquor license holder for PB. This is Chloe Rispoli, my daughter. Um, the request is one that we make pretty much every year, and uh, so if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. Otherwise, Thank you. we're looking okay. forward to going away for a little bit. Yep. Any comments from the board? Or from the, anyone else from the audience? Um, okay, may I have a motion? I move to approve the closing of the PB Boulangerie Bistro from January 2nd, 2019 through February 19, 2019. May I have a second? second. All in favor? And thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so. Uh, that, that's it. Okay, so we have an acceptance. Is Michelle here? I, I bet. I do not see I her bet here. Michelle thinks we start at seven, but I'm not. I'm not that positive. That could be correct. So we'll we'll postpone the gift acceptance of the donation until seven o'clock or so, and see and go back when uh, people from SPAC get here. Appointments and reappointments. Um, Chief Polly. Good evening again. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, uh, at this point, I'm asking for the board's uh, approval of my appointment of Mr. Benjamin Bartolini to be the next uh, full-time firefighter EMT for the town of Wellfleet. This position was, uh, was approved at the special town meeting a few months ago. Uh, ben has, uh, up until the last few months, was a lifelong resident of East Ham. Um, he uh, moved off Cape for a brief period of time and is uh, looking to come back. He's uh, finishing up his paramedic certification. We anticipate he'll be certified within the next four to five months as a paramedic. Um, and he uh, has been with us as a call firefighter for just over a year and a half, worked summer shifts, and uh, his uh, dad is a retired uh, East Ham firefighter. So he, he knows the business, uh, he knows us, we know him, and I would ask, uh, respectfully request your approval. Okay, any questions or comments from the board? Any from the audience? I have a comment. Okay. I just have a comment. 
Um, I met Ben at the Fire Academy uh, a while back, and he was there with my grandson, and uh, I found him to be a very personable young man, and I highly recommend him. Great, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, anyone else? Any from the uh, audience? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion? Jerry, you wanna make the motion? I moved, well, no, go ahead. I move to appoint Benjamin Bartolini as a full-time firefighter slash EMT, contingent upon the completion of the requirements as outlined by the Fire Chief Pauly in his December 5th memo to the Select Board. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, raise your hand. Thank you, and thank you. Thank Welcome you aboard. Thank you, Town of Wellesley. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. Question for you, Chief Pauly, please. Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's say Mr. Bartolini gets his paramedic. Do we need to then approve him as that? No, because it's, at that point, um, he's, he's being uh, hired as a firefighter EMT. Uh, in the past, again, what we've been able to do in the last couple times is uh, upon their paramedic certification, he's already employed the town of Wellfleet. So at that point, uh, he, he gets the certification to the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the National Registry, and then we move his grade to the next grade. So he's still, you know, he has been approved by the board as a full-time employee of the town of Wellfleet. Okay, so is the pay the same for EMT paramedic? No. No, it is not. So when does that get uh, looked at? Uh, when he gets uh, signed off as a, a licensed paramedic, uh, we do a, a change of a status form, and yes. it just gets processed through town hall. Okay, so it's within appropriations already existing. That's correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so moving on to appointments, we have with the local, uh, sorry, with the Wealthy Cultural Council, we have Autumn Edwards, who I'm pleased to meet. Um, you can come up if you want and, and sit. Um, so I've talked to um, the Cultural Council, and present the, presently they are list, listed as 15 members, but I thought we asked them a couple years ago, or they requested to be fewer people. Yeah. So they thought so too, and in their next meeting in January or so, they're going to come back and request for make a request for 13 members rather than 15, because it's really hard to reach a quorum, and they really don't need 15 people. So um, you don't need to apply to the cultural council because they they are full presently, although they're looking for a, a treasurer. And then with. Um, the local housing partnership, that too is full because we appointed someone last week, last meeting, and then Maddie Antel, who's also here, had applied earlier, and she's been going to meetings, and so I'm really disappointed that you've applied for three different committees and the positions aren't really available. So what I want to say to you is keep going. There's still things to do. Um, and start going to some of the meetings, you know, just to kind of catch up on what they're doing to see what you like, what you, what you have the time for, what you have, you know, what's available during the day, and kind of get used to that. All right, and then what I really should have done to begin with is we've seen your name, we've heard about you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yes, and, and talk into the mic, right, pull it right in. <laughs> um, so my name is Autumn. I'm new to the Cape Cod by, I'm new to Massachusetts by five years. I've lived on the Cape for the last two. Um, I earned my Bachelor of Photography degree in South Dakota, and I came down to Provincetown my junior year on an internship. Absolutely, that was it, I was done. I knew this is where I had to live, so I've been fighting to get here ever since. Um, now I'm starting to work on opening my own photography business, and I just really wanted to be a part of the community because I absolutely love it here, and it's been so accepting of me and my family since I've been here, and I just can't wait to really be a part of it. 
I've always wanted to move to the Black Hills. <laughs> wow. It's pretty. I definitely yeah, recommend I visiting. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's pretty desolate. So you, you're talking about opening up your own photography business. You know, something maybe getting involved also with the economic committee, or something like that, which meets at Press Hall. I'm, look, I'm quickly looking on here. I don't see the economic committee listed on here, but keep trying and just go, start going to meetings because even if, even if you're not on the committee, there's always people that come and go and they let you speak, they let you ask questions, they let you participate. You know? right. So if you have an idea, the, the committee, right Dick? Oh, oh he's asleep. Okay. Oh, he is not. <laughs> Janet, may I? That you can, you can always get involved and right. it, it will come, it'll work. Yes, Kathleen. Um, I met Autumn when she first arrived here in Wellfleet, and um, she is uh, very fond of the community. Um, her stepping up to these two particular boards are something that's near and dear to her heart. Um, she is uh, now um, living in one of our affordable housing units. Um, we're very proud to have her there. Uh, so she's trying to pay it back, and these are the two boards that she's uh, that are near and dear to her. So I hope she'll s still try and pursue them because she's walking the walk and talking the talk. Yeah, no, Thank you. it's great. Um, yes, Helen. So uh, to people out there in TV land and also to you, there's this really cool thing you can do. You can go to the town website and you go to the boards and committees part. And we got a lot of boards and committees. And if you go to each you know, section of the website, it'll tell you what the charge is. Okay. And the charge is what that group is supposed to do. So you can give yourself a taste of that. And then you, like was already said, I don't have to repeat it, go to meetings and see what the, the group is like. Not every group is for every person. All right. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you. There is an opening on the planning board if you want a challenge. There are two, <laughs> there are two openings on the planning board. Presently, yes. Autumn, I would also suggest if you uh, come into the town administrator's office uh -huh. and talk to myself or our principal clerk and we'll help you uh, um, pick out which committees you would also like to work on. So we would love to have you on board. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, and come back. And come to our meetings too. You'll really get the feel of the town coming to these. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I can't, I can't see you. Oh, you reversed it. You went, you did who retired. I'm doing who's on it. Okay. All right. Um, so now we have Maddie and Tell. Uh, you're here. Yes. B, didn't we? And let me see. Madam Chair? Yes. Did we skip B? Um, but, uh, Appointment terms. Oh, I was looking for that. I've got scribbles on here. Um, okay, before we get into the local housing partnership, uh, last week we questioned why there is only one-year appointments to the local housing partnership, and so that's what we're going to discuss, right, Mr. Hort? Yes. Um, yes, so do you want to present I'll something? just say that I talked to people on the local housing partnership, and they didn't they didn't have any opposition whatsoever to changing the length of the terms of the appointments. So yeah. they were fine with it if you wanted to do that. So would we like to increase the uh, appointment terms for the local housing partnership from one year to three year or one year to five year? Uh, I think it should be one year to three year because for a whole group, and there are quite a few of them, to have to go in every year, get reappointed, <coughs> get sworn in, it's just... Well, that's why mm. we're changing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so three years is a good, nice, given that anybody can leave any time they want. Sure. Uh, Madam Chair, yes. uh, through you to uh, Helen. Yes, I agree with that. I think three years is a good. Yeah. Okay, anybody else on the board? Three year, five year? Okay. I like five, but I'll be outvoted. Um, any comments on that from the audience? three or five year terms for the local, local. do you still want to be on it? <laughs> Actually, you can quit and then Autumn can come on. Um, exactly, perfect candidate there. I'll make your motion. 
I move to allow appointment terms to the local housing partnership to be for three year for three years. Second. All in favor? Okay, great, good. So, okay, thank you. Um, so now we'll have Maddie come up and um, tell us what she's been doing with the housing partnership. As she walks up to the microphone, I thought I would, what I did hear was I, I had her appointment be to expire June 30th, 2019, yeah. which is when everybody else does. And then I thought that the housing, when they came back for reappointment in for their June terms, the housing authority could give us who wants to serve what amount of terms and stuff like that so that we have staggered okay. um, rather oh, than good. just switch yeah. everybody. So they could self-determine which length of terms each person on the board wanted to do so that we could stagger them. Good, thank you. Is that okay with everyone? Helen looks thoughtful. Okay, I can't remember the charge. Can you? No. Okay, I drafted it, that was 700 years ago. But <laughs> why don't we hold that thought, appoint this wonderful person, yep. and refer to the charge before we go doing yep. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, do you want to tell us why you want to be on the housing partnership? Well, very obviously, because housing is such an issue in the town of Wellfleet. And um, I've just tried to keep abreast of what's going on with it. I've only attended one meeting of the uh, partnership, but I'm very interested in working with them. And I have uh, was involved for a number of years. I still am with the Lower Cape Outreach Council. And I just see it all over the Cape, um, what an issue it is, and I'm hoping that I can contribute um, what's needed, perhaps, to the committee. Okay. Any questions from the board, from the audience? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I move to appoint Madeline Entel to the Local Housing Partnership for a term to expire June 30th, 2019. Second. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> may I ask the town administrator, or some wonderful person, like maybe the assistant town administrator or one of us, to forward to our board the charge? Thank you, yeah. I mean, it's on the website, but, you know. Yeah, we can look at it. Feed, uh, spoon feed us, please. We will do that. Thank you. And also to the new member. How about that? Yeah. Okay, um, so moving on to the planning board, we have David Mead Fox wanting to be on the planning board. Um, do you want to come forward and say anything? I um, understand there are significant vacancies on the planning board, making it difficult to achieve a quorum. And so given the importance of, of course, all our boards and committees, but for sure the planning board, I thought I would uh, take a crack at it. And uh, it would be an honor to be on the planning board. I know it's a lot of work. And I should add, too, that I believe, I don't know if he's here, I believe Roger Nelson has withdrawn his he name. Has, you may yeah. know that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that leaves still two other vacancies, as I understand it, but at least there would be uh, if you approve of me, there would be two instead of three. So. Well, I've always thought you would be good on the planning board, so this is perfect. And I just have to ask you, I know that the present term that you're filling uh, is a three-year term rather than five-year. Yeah, it is. it's three-year. Hold on a minute. It may not be. Well, um, it says right here, three-year No, no well, can okay. I speak so to it, that? No, because you're interrupting me, and it's beside I the I apologize. Point. Okay. It's not. But no. um, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, so anyhow, <laughs> it's a three-year term, and I know that there are extenuating circumstances with which you are choosing to be on this board, and I certainly hope you're planning on staying for the full three-year term. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am, for Thank sure. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. Shannon, and I apologize for interrupting. That was terrible. There are three terms. There are three vacancies. Two of them are filling in for people who left before serving their five years. Denny O'Connell, however, left after serving his fifth year. Okay. And what I would like to do, given uh, the qualifications of Mr. Mead Fox, is to appoint him for a full five-year term mm. to, be, to expire. I hashed this out with Denny today and with Dan Fort, to expire on June 30th, 2023. 
So the other two appointments would be for people filling in for those others. And okay. there would be, okay. I think it's, I'm not sure if they're both three-year terms, but in any case, we have an option. We can, we can choose any length. Oh. And I'm really sorry I interrupted you. It's What's the matter with me? Well, let's ask David. Yeah, let's ask David if he wants a three-year or five-year. Well, that's very kind of you to offer that. I guess I'll say yes to the five um, if I'm still alive. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, uh, any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I move to appoint David Mead Fox to the planning board for a term to expire June 30th, 2023. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? All right, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. doing Thanks this. Thanks very much. And now we have the COA board appointment for May Ruth Seidel. Is she here? No. Yeah, she's not. Um, didn't just come in. Suzanne, do you want to get up and have a comment or support May Ruth in this? First of all, I know she's not here for, uh, number one, she doesn't drive. And I volunteered to drive her, but she's had a cold, so mm -hmm. she's not well enough to come tonight. May Ruth has been a summer resident of Wellfleet for many years, and now she's a year-round resident. Her children actually dragged her away for a while, and she made them let her come back. And <laughs> she's a regular at the senior center. She's full of ideas. She's open to new things, and I would highly recommend her being appointed to the board. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Comment, first time I met her, um, she in Baltimore was very involved with affordable housing there, so we're really lucky to have her do this. Jerry, did you want oh, to say I was just something? going to say, I know Mary Ruth, and I would highly recommend her also I agree. and yeah. she's done a lot with the uh, the non-resident taxpayers for years and i'm happy to hear that she is now here permanently and well fleet okay may i have a motion i move to appoint may ruth seidel to the council on aging board for a term to expire june 30th 2021 is there a second second all in favor Okay, thank you, unanimous. <coughs> All right, moving on to a license renewal from um, class from Eleanor Otto. Anybody here for that? New. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Roger, we, we said that we didn't announce it. He withdrew, sorry. Um, well, this is for um, the... Uh, garage on Briar Lane, and I think everybody knows it, knows Bob Fitzgerald, who's run that for many years, and other people who have worked there. So if, uh, uh, can I have a motion to approve the license, and then we'll take comments. I move to approve the renewal of the Class Two license for L and R Auto. Is there a second? Second. Gonna so are there any comments about that? Uh, I'm going to ask my usual question. So this has been completely vetted, right? By, yes. But who vets it? Uh, the principal clerk does. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and it, yes. Um, I just want to say that I think that they're a great um, auto shop. I think they do a lot of good in the yeah. community. They work really hard, and uh, they have a good local reputation, and I'm really in favor of this. Agreed. Um, any comments from the audience? Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor? Thank you, and that is unanimous. All right, moving on to business. Um, we have approval of community host agreement with Nature's Alternative. Anybody here representing them? Okay, Mr. Zender, you can come up, you can come, what? Well, I don't really have anything to say. We. We already had the meeting and um, the vote. The board voted to approve it. I think it was just a matter of working with town council in the form of an agreement. So I don't really have any pitch at all. I think it's just I'll just answer any questions you might have. Okay. Um, 
I, I will work? just bring up one thing that that we changed in the last minute. Um, Helen had uh, a comment on it. It's an art, uh, page nine on Article 16. Um, the original uh, agreement that that came before you called for that if there was any amendment, it would be to be signed by the original signers to the agreement. Um, which would be uh, Chairman Reinhardt, and if it happened five years from now and you weren't on the board, that wouldn't be possible. So what we did is we changed the wording to say on, our, on number 16, that amendments or waivers of any term, condition, covenant, duty, or obligation contained in this agreement may be made only with written amendments executed by the Wellfleet Select Board or its designee and an authorized representative from Nature's Alternative prior to the effective date of the amendment. So we just broadened that so it didn't refer to somebody who might not even Specific, yeah. be here. Okay, that's okay with you? It's fine, yeah, I, th I thought it made sense. Thank you, Helen. And um, I'm sure when it gets closer, maybe maybe you could describe what, what um, stage they're in in the process. I know that they were looking at that one. I can, off of Route yeah. Six. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm happy to. The, um, the next step for the applicant is to is to uh, submit the completed application to the CCC, the Cannabis Control Commission, for a license. And there's a time frame under which they have to uh, go through that license process. So this signed host agreement allows them to move forward with that process. Um, we're still intending to move forward with the uh, permitting of the location at the South Wealthy General Store. That requires a, um, a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. So we're right now waiting for the completion of the site plan by the engineer so that we can submit that application okay. to the zoning board. Yeah, I, I would like to see that. I guess we will at some time. So that was the other comment is that there was on the front page, whereas the company wishes to locate an approximately blank square foot. Yeah, I think that, that so, should have been in the agreement. You know, the intention is not to, I think, I think the intention is roughly 2,000 square feet for the retail operation. So I don't know what the remainder of the building will be used for. I imagine... It will be used for something. I don't think it will. It will uh, not be used. You know, I yeah, personally, okay. I think probably the existence, the continued existence of a general store, with the separate, you know, separate entrance and separate facilities, would be a good use of that building. But I don't know what that will be. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, just uh, tell the um, uh, nature's alternative that that is a really important area, sure. and we really need good business there. And it's, I, I drove around it today, and it's just so sad. It's just so I, lonely down I, there. I remember back when there were so, gas pumps there. I think, yeah. I think a retail, I think, a, I think a, a, a store is really the appropriate tenant in that plaza. Yeah, that ex, the extra I, I think, area. I think the people traveling through to the beach need a place to stop and buy the things yeah. they need to buy, whether it's newspapers or suntan lotion or, or food stuff. So they need that, but you know, it hasn't really worked over the last several years, so I'm hopeful that it will. But I can't, I can't tell you what will be there. Right. No, I know. I just wanted to clarify that because people may be asking if there is a design or anything, and I didn't well, they, think there was to, a, a, an approved design yet. There's so. roughly 4,500 square feet in the building, of which <coughs> yeah. 2,000 is anticipated to be used for the retail operation. So. Great. Yes, so, Helen? A um, couple things uh, to people out there, and just to highlight, it's not, it can't be a, a cafe. There's language in the con right. in the contract that says, you know, it's going to be like a liquor store where you can buy and consume off-premises. And you're supposed to report annually, so we need to put that on our agenda calendar once a year and make sure that happens. And the thing I can't remember, revealing my ignorance in public once again, is this applicant who was our second applicant? Yes. Didn't, didn't they also want to be medical marijuana, or do they, are they just going for the recreational adult use? The, yeah, they, in order to, for, for adult retail use, you need a host agreement. For, you need a what? You need host what's called agreement. a community host agreement, which is yes. what, you're, what yes. you're signing tonight. To be medical, you need what's called a letter of non-opposition by the town, and the selectmen have already issued that letter That's of non-opposition. So the, it, there's a possibility they could be medical and retail. I, I can tell you the way that the business model is moving these days, it, it's, it's more likely that it would be strictly retail. And what happens is they're, 
if someone with a medical card walks into a retail, okay. they then are able to buy the product at a 20% discount because it's not taxed by the state at that 20% level. So there's still um, the availability of the same product for people with medical, medical cards. But what happens is there's a maximum license number that people are allowed to have, which is based on medical license. It's three medical and three retail licenses. So if a business were to co-locate a medical and a retail in one store, they're giving up the availability of a license to put somewhere else. So I think from a business standpoint, it's unlikely that a, a business would want to put both of their licenses in one location. So. Okay, Justina. Uh, how come they aren't here tonight? Because I am. Um, they sent me here because when we came in, it, it, in reality, what's happening tonight is not a vote to approve a host agreement. It's, it's, the, it's the execution of a host agreement, which really is an administrative matter. Um, that could certainly be done by the, by the chairperson. Um, you know, it, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, but, but the board already voted to approve a host agreement. What you're doing really is just signing the host agreement. So we came in front of the board before, and we, we came with the representatives from the company to introduce them and to explain that and answer any questions about them. I'm really here just to, just to process exactly. the formality of the signing of the agreement. So it wasn't meant to be disrespectful at all. Okay. Yes. Um, no, I totally understand that. Yeah. I understand the legal limits of what we're doing today. Yeah. But I understood that they are entering um, our community and to be part of our business community. And key questions are being asked tonight that they're not necessary for the approval of it. But um, I'm disappointed that they didn't want to be here because we're having a really interesting um, discussion and it's a business discussion in some ways and the owner of the uh, business isn't here. They actually asked me, you know, and, and this, is, this is squarely my responsibility and my fault. They, I, I spoke with them and they said, should we come down? And I said, I said no. And the reason I said that was not to be disrespectful to this board at all. It's just that there was a, there was a community outreach meeting where they came down and they, they met people and answered questions and made a presentation. They came for the, for the request for the host agreement to be approved by the board and they answered questions. I really, I said to them, you don't need to come down, this is just ministerial. And so, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I misread that. And so it, it really was not their desire not to be here. Janet, sound good? Yes. Yeah, um, I had the same thought and then I thought, oh no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, uh, we've been with them three times actually. I think, mm. and yes. if they had never come, and one of them actually may have been before one. you got elected, I'm not quite sure about that. But anyway, there was also a typo on page 10. Uh, I'll, which I'll bear is, responsibility for that as well. Yeah, it's third party should be down with the third party's chunk, and it should be numbered. It's okay, um, it's obvious. Yeah, Madam, Madam Chair, through you, yeah, Helen, I understand what you're saying, but, um, I don't know, I'm confused because I thought that it was going to have medical marijuana and this is the first time we're hearing it. Well, uh, I understand what you're saying, Ben, that there's some parameters that have been agreed to and it's not legally necessary to get the legal document. I'm just hoping they'll be a really good part of our business community and um, sometimes that takes face-to-face -face interaction. And I know what they... When I ask the business plan, they expect to gross $5 million um, a year. So it seems uh, that there's enough profitable meat on the bone to warrant a, a, a trip. So one of the requirements for opening up a marijuana establishment is that you have to do public outreach. Yes. So sometimes it's here, sometimes it's in, um, they've, They've gone before the planning board, haven't they? I know the other one went before the planning board. I don't believe that they have. But okay. I, you know, I came into but this a little late, you know, just okay, to, yeah. and, and to clarify one thing, and I, th I think Kathleen's right. They've been before your board twice. They came in and made a request for a host agreement, which I believe was denied the first time. We That's came right, back it was, was you're right, yeah. The third time they were in town was the, was the community outreach meeting, which, which was not technically before your board. So Yeah, um, so they have done one community outreach. That's what that was? They've okay. done that. And also in the agreement, which was negotiated, there's an obligation to continue to address concerns that are raised by residents through yeah. that community outreach process. So if there are concerns, you know, that are raised, and, and they could be either concerns during the permitting process or they could be concerns after they open, there's a responsibility to address those. And my guess is that they will be addressed. You know, I'm not sure what the response will be, but, but there's... A, they want to stay in business in the town, and, and yeah. obviously there's going to be a license issued each year, I would imagine, a business license. So, 
And, and just for the sake of the people in the audience and at home, uh, marijuana establishments have to go through very stringent planning board requirements and zoning board uh, scrutiny. So um, we, we do not address that, but it does get addressed. Yeah, I'd, like to, I'd like to clarify one more thing. Uh, you know, when I said that they may not operate medical, I don't know. When you issue a host agreement for retail or when you issue a letter of non-opposition for medical, what you do then is you're enabling the applicant to go forward and seek a license from the CCC. That doesn't require them to open in your town. It just means that if they do open in your town, then they're going to have to pay the, the monies that are uh, obligated under the host agreement because, you know, it, it may turn out that for some business reason this location doesn't work. I, I doubt that. You know, I, all the indications I'm getting from my client is they want to move ahead as quickly as possible and get that, that store open. But I can't stand here and say they either are or are not going to have a medical component, you know, a separate medical operation there. I just can't tell you that. Yeah, I would guess it wouldn't be separate, but that's a, that's a guess, so I won't say anything. I mean, I think all the medical establishments are just going with adult use, and within that, there could be a medical component. Well, and, there's, and if, if I, I, know, I know you have a busy night, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. No, but actually, we're moving along okay, quite quickly. There's some reasons for this. You know, for, for medical operations, as, as you may yeah. or may not know, um, sorry, for medical operations. No, sit down if you want to sit. Would you, would you like me to? Okay. Only if you're no, only if you no, want to. I'm actually to. comfortable. Okay. I, I, I like being here. Um, okay. <laughs> I like microphones and cameras. Uh, for medical, um, you have to actually own your your own grow source, which means that if you're you're operating a medical marijuana establishment, right. you yeah. actually have to have a cultivator that you own and control, and you have to vertically control that product from the time it's planted to the time it's sold to the customer. With a retail operation you buy from a wholesaler or you control your own cultivation. It's still tested. It has to be tested through a state licensed, CCC licensed testing facility. Um, I've never been in one of these shops and you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if I ever will, but I have to imagine that for the customer going in, whether you walk in with a marijuana card or whether you walk in as an adult user, the experience is gonna be very, very similar. Meaning you're gonna go, you're gonna be checked in through a process, a secure process. You're gonna be informed about the products that are available. You'll be counseled if you wanna be counseled and you'll purchase the product and you'll leave. So I don't, I think the only real difference from medical to uh, retail is um, if you have a medical co-located with the retail, then you have to have a separate line for the yes. medical people yeah. where, they're, where they're serviced. You have to reserve a certain amount of your product that's always available for the, for the medical people. Um, whereas with retail, you're going to be purchasing at the same way that the adult users purchase, you're just not paying that sales tax. And so I'm not sure the end result experience is gonna be that much different in terms of what people see. Um, yeah. but, but I can't, you know, I can't stand here and tell you that it, that it won't be different in some way. Good, thank you. Um, thank Kathleen? You. Um, just a couple of things. Um, First, um, I'll be looking at what Wareham's doing because mm -hmm. they're setting the example, Okay. Um, you know, on, on how we go forward with this. Um, they opened a month ago, I believe. Um, but another question, get back to the building and the business itself, um, and you may not be able to answer this, and I would completely understand. Sure. Um, do you have any knowledge of whether they're going to sublet um, that additional retail space? Are they looking to sublet it or are they looking to um, develop the, it themselves? I, I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I can't tell you what they've told me because that's privileged information, but my sense is that right now they're really focused on trying to get the location permitted for operation as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a retail marijuana use and that what happens with the remainder of the building is kind of they're really focused on trying to get, look at the, get the site plan prepared, get this host agreement signed, get the license issued by the state. My guess is as soon as they've got those so that they know it's going forward, meaning they're going to have the ability to open, they're going to begin to, um, as a part of the zoning process, going to the Zoning Board of Appeals, we have to present to the Zoning Board a set of floor plans that identify where this is going to be in the building and how it's secure because it has to be separated from the other uses. Yeah. Separate entrances, you know, the, all of those facilities that are, have to be secure and we have to work with the, with the police department on that. Once they've pinned that down, my guess is there's going to be a certain amount of space that's left that will lend itself to another use and my guess is that would be a retail use, but I don't know that. That's when they're going to begin to, um, get more into that. The other thing is that the status of the project right now is that they don't occupy the project. They have, a, they have an option 
and a, a legally enforceable right to have the building if they get all the permits, which means that they can't really move ahead to negotiate with someone else to either sublet the space or do oh, something gotcha. until they have pinned out that they're actually entering into that and commencing that lease. Okay. So um, I know what I'd like to see there, and I, I, I'm, I'm guessing if I talked with any one of you privately, it would be the same thing. But I'm, I'm just thinking so, of yeah. a young entrepreneur that might want to, you know, a heads up that that space could be available, yeah. but we can't go there yet. So I, I, get, I, I think that. I think there will be an opportunity. I just don't know what it will be. Great, so. thank Good. you, uh, Justina. Uh, again, I wish they were here. I understand you advised them that it wasn't necessary, but I think the number of questions that you're guessing at the answer or guessing what they might say or and so forth highlights. Uh, why it would be beneficial for them as well as us and part of being in uh, part of a business community is uh, Showing up and forming relationships and being part of the town. So I'm disappointed at uh, The decision not to show up because during the process we heard that they were enthusiastic to be here I understand we're here to approve uh, a legal agreement and that that will go forward, but perhaps you could communicate uh, some of what I said that, you know, let's let's be a part of Wellfleet if we're here. <clears throat> well, I could also, you know, again, I, what I should have done, I should have called, I should have called Dan and said, should I bring them in? Um, you know, I, I actually, my communication was, should I be here, I think is what it was. I, I really thought it was that administrative. I actually asked Dan today, should I be there? And he thankfully said, yeah, you, you should. Um, I can certainly make a request to my clients to come in and meet with your board. And you can put it on the agenda. If you, if you want to have a question and answer with them, it wouldn't be the end of the world, and I and I'm sure I'm sure they would come down and meet with you if you wanted us to do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I don't feel any need because I know we've seen them before, and they haven't really progressed that far. But certainly, come springtime or something, if they go on to a next step, or if they want to do yeah. another uh, okay. public outreach, they're certain well, certainly welcome to come here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to okay. agree with that. And Ben has given me everything I need, and the main thing is. I don't need to hear any, any more from, you know, their CEO. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this, this document is all I need. And actually, I'm, I'm quite happy not to be listening to Excelsior. I was happy to hear it the first and second and third times. I'd just like to correct something that Mr. Zender said. We didn't actually turn them down or reject their first attempt with us. It was we said, we want to know more. There, you know, there was this moving target, and we wanted to commit in an authentic, good way. So, OK, thank you for that. Yeah, we didn't vote no. I wasn't here at that point. I, was, yeah. I got the phone call later, so I, I wasn't quite sure what happened. But yeah. OK, thank you. Janet. OK, yes, Jerry. When they first came here, uh, the first time, and we did not ap approve a host agreement with them. The second time they came here, uh, they had stated that they were going to open a retail marijuana shop, and they would look into the fact of having a medical marijuana uh, shop also. They also said, speaking about that you would like them to be part of the community, they said in a statement that they would do their very, very best to hire Wellfleet residents and that they would actually be part of the community. That was what they had said. So I'm certain that we, can, we can't hold them to that, but... I believe them. I think that they're going to try their best to have the best people that they can, and they will be residents of Wellfleet. And I believe they said something around 16 people somewhere in that area that they might uh, be able to hire. So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, I think they'll probably do very well here in Wellfleet. And uh, if you look at what's going on in the western part of the state or wherever they're at, uh, they'll probably do a land office business. So um, I'm looking forward to them coming. Uh, I, you know, I smoked marijuana many, many years ago. Most of us have probably. Uh, I don't smoke it anymore, but I have smoked it. I cough it up, so it's not for <laughs> me. You know. uh, so um, anyway, I'm looking forward to them being here. 
I'm looking forward to them hiring wealthy residents, as they stated. And if they can, they also stated they would look into very seriously of having a medical marijuana uh, shop also. Good. Okay, any more comments from the board? Any comments or questions from the audience? May I have a motion? I move to approve the host community agreement with Nature's Alternative, Inc., and authorize the town administrator to sign the agreement. As amended. Correct. If I can make a, a change to that, what it, the agreement that actually came through has the select board chair signing yeah. it as opposed to the town administrator. So. Okay, let me uh, redo that motion for you, Dan. I move to approve the host community agreement with Nature's Alternative, Inc., and authorize the chair of the Wellfleet Select Board to sign the agreement. As amended. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. Favor? Yes, no? Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Good night. All right. Um, next, we have the update on the Herring River Restoration Project from the town administrator. So there are two things that I wanted to bring up to you. Um, one is, as, as we've discussed before, uh, Gary Joseph has resigned from his position on the Herring River Restoration Committee, and it's up to us to find somebody and appoint them to the Herring River Restoration Committee. So we, we do need to be looking in our community to see who we, we might want to have represent us on that committee. So um, please keep that in mind. Um, the other part is uh, we had, as planned, we had the uh, briefing with the new town council for Wellfleet and for Truro for the Herring River Restoration Project. Um, that went very, very well. I was impressed with our, town, our new council for the project who had done a lot of homework, asked a lot of questions, came in early, got a tour of, of the site so we could actually see what he was representing. Um, I went out to lunch with him and two other people uh, from the project. Uh, he continued to pepper us with questions, got a lot of questions asked, so I was, I was quite impressed with the amount of um, homework he had already done prior to, to coming here to be briefed. Um, during that meeting, one of the conversations that came up was with the representatives from Truro, and the Truro uh, town manager was there, and she indicated that Truro, this evening, that, that they're at their meeting, would be looking to change their role in this project because it was strongly felt that this project, the restoration project, was really a project between the Cape Cod National Seashore and the town of Wellfleet. So Truro is looking to most likely have the MOU 3 amended in which they wouldn't be a part of of the project itself or um, have a role on the executive committee and instead they would be considered just a property owner and they are willing to write a letter of support and say that they support the project and that they would agree that when necessary they will give consent for work that needs to be done on Truro owned land but they don't feel like the project is really a town of Truro project so they're looking at taking a different role in the project. Helen? Yeah, and we're going to um, have an executive council meeting, a final one with them, if we can pin down a date where this will formally be discussed and they will be thanked and they will step off because that's the group that can really decide it. I mean, the select board in Truro has to look at it. I would like to pin down for the record, that, that sounded like a really good meeting with the two it attorneys. It was very good. But I'd like to pin down for the minutes, the people that were there. There was... Uh, what, Greg, Greg McGregor. Greg McGregor. Um, uh, Barry Fogel is the Truro Town Council. Ray Ann Palmer. Correct. Dan Hort, Carol Ridley, and Martha Craig, and who else? Yes, um, Lauren McKean was there, I believe, and um, Brian Carlstrom was there, as well as Tim Smith, who did the initial presentation to bring the town councils up to date on what the project okay. was. Okay, I just think it's. You sure. know, nice record for three years from now. Yeah, I agree. Okay, any questions from the audience? Okay. Um, moving on to dredging update. 
Mr. Hart. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh. That was Carolyn Palante. Oh. oh, okay. So, yeah, so that's, that's yeah, I was good. Thanks, Thanks Kathleen. Yeah. I we was hoping somebody that. would do that. So. Yeah. yeah. So we had a, a, a the next item on here is the dredging update. We had a meeting this week of the dredging task force. And Janet, step in and correct me or add to it anytime you wish. Um, for those of you who aren't aware of this, we um, were not included in the uh, Army Corps of Engineers funding plan for 2019. Um, I would say this is the second year that we really thought we had done everything we needed to do um, to, to be included in the funding. One of the things that is most frustrating is that you don't know where you have fallen off in the project. So we believe we have very strong support from the Massachusetts office. They continue to work on securing their water quality certificate. They've spent $150,000 um, doing surveys and, and you know preliminary work on the project. Um, Ed O'Dono, who is the chair and is retiring, has said that the one thing he wanted to accomplish before he retired was to have Wellfleet Harbor dredged. Yet, with all of that, we did not, we were not on their work plan for 2019. Um, what we don't know is if we're that close, that we're going to, you know, that if we just wait one more year, we will have the possibility that we'll be included in that. We don't know if, because we're a small harbor, um, because we're in a very blue state and the political climate that Perhaps we won't, you know, it, in 10 years we still may be waiting. We don't know the answer to all of that. So we continue to figure out what's best for Wellfleet and look at, at how we're going to do this. Um, shortly tonight we will, you'll see that we have our first deposit into our maintenance dredging fund. Um, I think that's a good sign to show both the state of Massachusetts and and the federal officials that were serious about getting our harbor dredged. The dredging task force looked at the idea and is researching the idea of um, what if Wellfleet purchases some of our own equipment and does the dredging itself. So that would, that would give us a little bit more leeway it also might be another sign to federal officials. We're always hopeful that the federal officials are going to come through and dredge the portion of the channel that they own. Um, but if they don't, we can't keep waiting year after year for them to come through and do it. There may be a time that the town of Wellfleet is going to have to look at it and say, we're going to have to dredge the federal channel. even even though you would look at it and say it's not our responsibility, it should be the federal government's responsibility. But if the federal government continues to not come through for us, we can't afford to not do it. It has to be done. That, that black mayonnaise that continues to grow in the sediments in, in our harbor, um, you know, are gonna, they're already starting to have that effect, but they're gonna continue to have the effect of smothering our shellfish industry. It's just too important to us. So we're looking now, we're researching into the possibility of buying our own equipment and having, our, having staff that would be trained to be able to do this dredging part of it. There's a lot of different moving parts here that we have to put together. One of the other pieces that came from the meeting is we think it's time that the select board um, that we create a charge and appoint a Wellfleet dredging committee. Um, it's, it's another sign to everybody that we are dead serious about moving this project forward. And we think that perhaps having a, a committee um, will be a stronger statement both for having it done and also a, a committee will, will be stronger in being able to move this project forward. Um, 
Would you like okay. to add to it? Well, just to add that this committee will will, um, will be appointing a <laughs> I almost said dred dredgery again, but no, uh, a dredging task force committee, and uh, it's going to be um, people who really know the environment, know the sediment, really know our harbor. We need some very serious, capable people on it. So. Um, please apply, It'll ha you'll have to apply. And we're also gonna keep it to a somewhat small committee. And that will start, we'll we'll start taking applications as of tomorrow, if anyone's interested in being on it. We already have about four people or so on it as it is, so. Nope, but that's it, that's a good understanding. And you know, we'll just, uh, once this is all done, we're just really going to work hard. There's got to be a plan in place. There's got to be procedures and people in place to keep it maintained. And we do think that we're going to be maintaining the harbor quite often. I mean, there's, you know, there's not a good flow there. So, but no, that's it. Any questions from the um, audience? Okay, go ahead. Both of you guys can get up. Yeah, just a um, just a comment. I think one of the one of the problems that that Wellfleet faces obviously is its population size, and we're going to continue to battle against that um, with respect to getting our harbor dredged. Um, we also happen to be about a third of the Commonwealth's uh, production of aquaculture. We're a major um, <coughs> contributor to the state. I don't think that message got through to the governor. Yeah, I agree. And I don't think that I don't think our economic message is getting to the governor's desk. Um, the governor did not support the project. I agree. Um, that's a that's a, a big problem, and I think part of it's political, you know, being the kind of state that we are. But if you have when we have a Republican governor, um, there's an opportunity to get um, potentially a little bit more attention. Um, my thought on it is is that you know it would make sense for us as a community, whether it's you know uh, the t town administrator and, and the chair of the board of selectmen, uh, Sarah Peak, and and potentially. Um, you know, our state senator, uh, Julian Sear, ask, request a, a, a meeting with the governor and find out why the governor won't support the project. Uh, I think until he supports the project, we're not going to have yeah. the kind of leverage that we need in, 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 in Washington. Um, generally, these kind of projects, the projects that tend to get the funding are the ones where there's unani unanimity within the delegation. Um, clearly, that didn't happen in this case. Um, you know, I, I don't personally know anybody in the governor's office, but I think asking him why the project wasn't supported um, would be a great first step because we're going to find out what's missing, whether it's political, whether it's economic, whether the message isn't getting through. What is it that, that's, you know, keeping Wellfleet on the short end of the stick? Um, you know, I, I have heard feedback um, pr from previous meetings. This is going back a couple of years ago uh, with the Cape Cod Commission. There's been some pushback from, from legislative representatives that we don't have, you know, we don't have a long-term maintenance um, program. You know, that's a concern. If the state's gonna step forward, this is a comment that was made at the meeting um, when Paul Pilcher and I were involved with um, some meetings with the Cape Cod Commission. Uh, and the pushback is, is that if we don't have a dredge maintenance, a maintenance program, that's a real, you know, um, um, decrement to our application. It's not, a, it's, it's not helping our application. Many of the communities um, that currently have dredge needs, whether it's, you know, Harwich, Falmouth, pick the, big, the bigger um, towns on the Cape, they do have an ongoing program. And so the comment that was made at that meeting was, you know, if, if the town of Wellfleet is going to be asking for this money, and we're asking basically for about 60 to 80 percent federal match, something like 20 percent state match, uh, so that the town is is not going to have to pick up the, the lion's share of this cost. The comment that was made was, you know, if we're going to give you that money, you got to be thinking about the town taking over this responsibility going into the future. We're not going to be the ones holding the bag. So I just want to share that because that's some background and perspective that perhaps may be um, comments coming from, from the legislature or other parts of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that may not be in, you know, helping our, our cause here. So bottom line is we really don't know why we, we weren't uh, approved. I was quite shocked because you know, it seemed like we were number two on the list. Um, you know, Plymouth got the funding on the last go around. More money was added and we still didn't get it. So there's, there's a disconnect someplace. So I think we need to learn more. 
Well, we will, and if you heard, we are uh, looking into buying our own equipment so that we can maintain the harbor forever, you know, that, it's, that that is our program. And as far as the governor goes, the governor told Jay Ash to be our liaison. So, um, yep. But thank you. You have a good perspective on it. Uh, let's have David say something first, okay? I just wanted to ask if there's a, um, I'm sure the thinking is, I just want to be sure, it seems to make a lot of sense to have a very concrete, uh, financially viable plan for maintenance dredging, which also functions kind of like you said, Dan, a minute ago, as a plan B if we don't get the funding from uh, the feds or the state, because at the end of the day, it's got to get done and that's, therefore, the maintenance dredging equipment has a two benefits. Maybe only the one for maintenance, but the other might be. Maybe it's the primary. Maybe that's the way we have to dredge the harbor, period. However hard that would be financially, for sure. I'm sure it's very, very expensive. But uh, I just support the idea that we need to be ready and we need to have a, a plan all worked out because otherwise, if we say we get turned down again, then if we start really getting serious at that point, it's another yeah. year. So to really do that parallel planning now, sounds like you are in pricing and all of that, I would yeah. really support a lot. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. And there are, um, if the, um, what is it? It shouldn't be called the Airbnb tax anymore. What is it really called? Room tax. The room occupancy room, tax room expansion. Room occupancy tax. Part of that tax, 2.75% of that tax, is um, slated to go towards clean water, 208 management plans, whatever t individual towns on the Cape need to maintain water. And um, it can also be used for dredging, being used for upgrading septics. You know, there doesn't have to be, um, you know, town water everywhere or sewage systems. It can be used for smaller things too, so that'll be a great help. And this might be a good time to talk about SPAT's donation, since um, you asked about comment, money. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to. I agree with what Kurt said. Um, I feel that, um, you know, in pushing this forward, the town has to really do due diligence um, with um, the uh, dredging meeting that just happened this past week. Um, my concern with the town attempting to do the federal channel is um, what are the liability issues of the town going into the federal channel and dredging it ourselves? What kind of liability does that put on us? Um, will the federal government assume the liability if we're in the channel dredging, or is that the town's, gonna, town's assumption? Those are questions I have. But I also made a suggestion at that um, meeting that before we even go out and purchase equipment, um, to do our own dredging, uh, to get back the uh, consultant from Bourne Engineering um, to do a short feasibility uh, plan for us on what that would, uh, uh, you know, take uh, for the town of Wellfleet to actually do our own dredging. Uh, do we have the manpower, the uh, personnel to do this? It's the largest infrastructure project in Wellfleet in over 100 years since the dike was built. So I can't, I, you know, messing this up is, on the town would be, you know, a phenomenal. Um, you know, so that's my thinking on this. Okay. Helen, you wanted to say something? Yes. Um, Kathleen just mentioned the fact that we had a very detailed presentation when Dennis was the chair um, from this person. And it had, it was well into being a feasibility study. It had numbers, it had time, you know, uh, envelopes of, yeah. yeah. And uh, I would like to take a look at it again. I would like, uh, you know, this new uh, committee that we're thinking of appointing to have that right there on the table for the first, you know, right away. I don't think we can uh, dredge the feds property, but I'm not sure about that, but I'm, okay. But the other thing is, 
This initial cleanup, which is on our usual egregious 12, 10 year cycle, is bigger than maintenance dredging. Yeah. The last thing I want to say is, given the infrequency of the use and the necessary licenses for the people to operate a dredger and the expense of the equipment, by all means, we should build a fund to hire contractors to do it. We should not own that piece of equipment, which will sit simply rotting between dredge requirements because you can't just dredge sort of every year a little bit. So this is all fairly new to the committee and uh, we had talked about it a month ago or so, and we talked about it uh, yesterday, but um, we all have the same questions, and our first step is to talk to Born Engineering, and everybody has their different tasks, and we're going to be um, working on it. So we'll, we will get a procedure in place. We're going to find out costs. We're going to find out what we can do. We're going to talk to the Army Corps of Engineering. So all the very things that you guys have mentioned has been discussed, and it's an update. So, uh, Jerry? Yeah. Um, understand what Kurt is saying. Uh, the other thing is I agree with Helen that maybe we should have outside contractors do the job. On the other hand, if we bought our own equipment, uh, the harbor master tells me that there's a good possibility that we can rent that equipment out also. And there are other uh, areas on the Cape that need to be dredged with that kind of dredge that we would have. Uh, the county dredge that they have now can't do uh, certain types of dredging. Uh, Wellfleet's one of them, and I think uh, uh, the harbor in Orleans is the other one. Uh, that I've been told about. So there's a possibility we could rent that equipment out and make money with it. And that's something we need to look at other than just thinking about an outside contractor. Um, the other thing is uh, the Congress has changed. And we need to not just look at the governor. We now need to look at our Congress people, Keating, is, is our congressman, but we need to get a hold of people who are going to be chairman of these committees that would be involved and have, would have some influence on the Corps of Engineers. And I think we need to look in that area also, not just the governor. We got to look at our Democratic Congress right now and see where we go from there. So that's the other thing. Uh, Mr. Hort. So um, a couple of things I'd like to bring up. One of the, um, in response to Hel um, Helen's question, we did specifically ask the Army Corps of Engineers if the town itself would be allowed to dredge the federal channel, and they said, yes, we would be able to. Um, so that is not, we asked under, the, under the, the, you know, could we use the permits that the Army Corps of Engineers has already collected? Yes, we could use almost every permit they already have. So we wouldn't have to go through a whole permitting process again. And we would be able to do it ourselves. Um, we're still hoping, obviously, that the federal channel is dredged by the federal government, which is how it should be. Um, in um, I'm glad Kathleen brought it up because I, I forgot to mention that we did talk during the meeting on Monday that we needed to bring the consultant in, bring in the experts. We need to start talking about, I think, you know, I think it is important for us to start saying we have a dredging plan for maintenance dredging once the project, you know, once we get it dredged the first time, we have a maintenance dredging plan to keep the harbor cleaned so that we're not coming back to the federal government or to the state in another 10 years and asking for a huge amount of money again, that we're going to be continuously dredging it. And the last thing I wanted to touch on is, <clears throat> maybe it's just the way you say it, but I wouldn't say that, that Governor Baker said he wouldn't, that he didn't support the project, but what he said is he wouldn't issue a letter of support. And I was told by people in his office that he felt if you issue a letter of support for one community and you don't do it for another one, that you're pitting communities against each other. And I tried to argue the point that 
we are pitting communities, but what we're trying to do is get this money to come to Massachusetts as opposed to going to Mississippi or Florida, and we need your help doing that. The one mistake I think I made there is thinking that I needed to get all of the dredging letters at a certain time. It's my intent to start working right now because if I can get Baker to, Governor Baker to write a letter of support for well, dredging the Wellfleet Harbor, the next time the cycle comes through, I've got his letter in hand. I don't have to wait until it's time for the decision making to happen. So I'm hoping to work with Senator Sear and Representative Peake to hopefully get a meeting set up with Governor Baker. Um, Jay Ash, who's been, a, a, I think, a, a big supporter of this project, is, um, I've heard that he's intending to leave the Baker administration to go into the private sector, so we need to keep that relationship going with the governor's office, and I hope to uh, strengthen that down the road. And I'll just add that even um, Senator Markey was also, he's one of the big people to talk to, and he said he was surprised we didn't get it. So one reason, aside from uh, including all the other ones, you know, we may never know why we didn't get it, but we're a very small town, and we had a very large request, you know, so, um, yeah, so that, that could be the other thing, is they look at it when they're going down the line item budgets, they're going, oh, Wellfleet, two to 3,000 people, what were we requesting? Like a, it's a five million. Five project. million, and there so a number of other places, uh, you know, Plymouth, sixty thousand people, and they may have even asked for less. I, I don't know. I don't know the numbers, but the towns who got it were, were requesting smaller amounts of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I just want to say that the dredging committee has been in effect for at least five or six years. People have really been complaining about them. You are, you are, you're on it. <laughs> did you write your letter? Absolutely. You did, yeah. So everybody's been working really hard. And one of the things that I think we are putting into place is that it's been 15 years or more since our last dredging. It's not 10 or 12, it's 15, 17, however many years. And that's, that is the main problem. So that's why when we say we might buy our own equipment, and we're going to also meet with the Cape Cod Commission because they say they will help us and stuff. Maybe they can give us some money for it. I, we don't know. I mean, this was just yesterday talked about. But we really will be maintaining, doing some dredging, possibly every other year, probably, probably, possibly every year. Once it gets going, we'll be doing it every other year, one <coughs> section or another. And in this plan, we can do Chipman's Cove, which wasn't in the last plan necessarily. So. Everybody's, we, everybody, it's, it's grinding, it's excru excruciating. It's the dredgery committee. <laughs> no. Oh, we but to. we know, everybody here, everyone, everyone in town knows we need dredging and we need it ASAP. You know, it's obvious, so. Yeah, I just wanted to add a couple of couple other comments. One thing about maintenance dredging that I think um, I just wanted to put out in the mix I don't think we can think about maintenance dredging as simply uh, always having a piece of equipment that we take out there to dig out spoils. I think we have to think about, about it more holistically and sustainably, um, and that includes things like increasing our shellfish populations in certain areas to help protect from resiltation. Um, I think we've got to be thinking a little bit outside the box um, when we come to the maintenance dredging component. And I just wanted to say that publicly because I don't think it's as simple as, you know, every, simple, every time yeah. uh, digging a new hole and having the, the fill from all the rest of the, uh, um, the harbor edge refill that hole. Yeah. Um, we've got to be a little smarter about this. Uh, and I think that's going to enhance our application when we start to have those components in this application. The other thing is I think what's, what's great about, I think what's come out in this meeting is there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat, whether we take on the responsibility uh, with our own equipment and our own manpower, thinking outside the box that the feds and the state aren't gonna help us, uh, whether it's being more aggressive with the uh, Cape Cod Commission, we have a, uh, a community need across the Cape, the entire Cape has, we have a lot of shallow harbors, it's not just Wellfleet and Orleans. Um, this is a big problem for the Cape. Um, and Black Mayo is a big problem in a lot of other harbors. 
so clearly there's a uh, you know there's a, there's a um, uh, a regional need as well so it's at the end of the day it's all a matter of cost can we get the Cape Cod Commission can we get the county to step up to the plate with equipment it makes more sense for them if the equipment is deployed you know one year in Wellfleet one year in Orleans one year in Chatham I mean that's a much better solution for everybody it's a much better use of the equipment and lower cost for us at the end of the day it's just a matter of money you know what's going to be the you know kind of the situation we're in now is trying to get money from the federal government and the states rather than the, the town of Wellfleet uh, ponying up for the entire cost. I think if this went to taxpayers right now, um, if you were putting out an $18 million bond uh, item on a, an upcoming warrant, the town would probably vote for it. But I think right now everybody's doing due diligence to try to maximize the resources that we can get elsewhere so that the uh, wealthy taxpayer is in a least cost um, position as far as getting this job done. Um, but I think we've got to look at these two or three different possibilities, look at the costs and benefits of each of these uh, avenues, and um, start to get some consensus around um, how we think it, you know, it makes most sense for us. Because we, everybody's obviously trying to think outside the box right now, and that's great. So I'm sorry you weren't at the meeting yesterday because you always give such good, good, uh, have a lot of knowledge, but anyhow, we'll be having one in the beginning of January. The other thing that, uh, Dennis Murphy called Cashman, who's the main dredging company on the East Coast. They're three years out with being busy and booked. So that's how much, so we talk about wealthy. The other thing is that not only were we a bit negligent in our um, dredging, so was everyone else, you know, like many towns along the whole East Coast. And we're talking about rivers, we're talking about the Great Lakes everywhere have been a little bit, you know, they've been passing it down the line saying we'll deal with it later, so. But no, we are, we are working hard on it, and I know you are too. So, good. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, Janet, we are different than the other towns because we have not only our marina, but the shellfishing industry. So Most we know that, okay. But the other thing is, the state gave, and bless their hearts, they needed it, New Bedford, a huge amount yeah. of money this yeah. year. They did need it. They did, but I have a feeling it's less, it's partly what Dan said, you know, you've got to be fair to all the children. But I also think it isn't a matter of us being rejected, it's a matter of the money going elsewhere, which is sort of different. So I think we should hold out for getting help from the government. I agree. And, and, and can we please unearth we the document we got from that consultant that Yeah, we have all meeting. the consultants stuff. No, but yeah. I haven't seen it for a while. And okay. we have two new, you know, we have yeah. a new member and she hasn't seen it. So, you know, it's good reading. It is. It is. I love dredging. Okay. Uh, any comments from the, from the audience anymore? Anybody else on the board? Good. So any help anyone can provide, connections, you know, any, any ideas, we're to the taking them down. Connection. Congressman. Keating? Well, somebody else that summer's here. Okay, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I know who it is, but I don't remember who it is. Good. Uh, where are we? Could we go back to the one we skipped over earlier, the gift acceptance? Oh, yes, because, so, <laughs> ladies, our, our meetings now start at 6 o'clock. I know, I know. We're, we, we're allowing it. You weren't the only ones that didn't know that. But we thought through the winter from, from, uh, from when we leave daylight savings time until daylight savings time in March, we're, we're meeting earlier. Isn't that great? Yes. Yeah. So... So yes, so we talked about, we briefly explained that uh, SPAT is donating to the dredging fund. So if you want to come up and present, I think you should present the check to Dan because Dan's been really busy at it, but I'll walk over there. What does he want to do? You it's your, it's do your program. Would you like to come up and make a statement or? Yeah. Michelle Inslee from Wellfleet SPAT. And Janet Drohan, board member SPAT. 
So SPAT's really delighted to be able to contribute towards this effort because we know it's really critical to our coastal culture, to our shellfishing industry. And uh, personally, I've sat on the dredging task force myself, so I've been through all of that for years where we got our hopes up and we thought we were making headway and to get our hopes dashed. So I'm really personally excited about this idea of, of doing something to demonstrate that we are thinking proactively, that we're creating a plan for maintenance dredging. I, I think that was something that the state and the federal government was looking for, and so I'm happy that we've come to that because we, we can't wait, even though um, it, I know it's their responsibility, so it's, it's a... It's a really a tricky situation, but um, I'm so happy that SPAT was able to do this. Yep. Well, so much we're, we're honored and we're, and we're needy, so it's, it's great. And, and I think uh, it's, it's meaningful just to piggyback on what Kurt said, that we're here to support shell fishing, and that's really SPAT's major focus, so perhaps we could start a bit of a trend. I will share with you that all the events of Oysterfest, the event here at the COA, the um, wine crawl through the galleries the night before and Oyster Fest, the interest of the public, of everyone who lives in Wellfleet and comes to Wellfleet in shell fishing is at its peak. So I think it's something we need to remember and capitalize on it. And we hope this is just a little bit of seed money, so. Thank you, <laughs> spat money, seed spat. Speed, money. Seed spat, <laughs> spat. So seed. Jen, right. you wanna take a picture or anything? Give you your phone. Who's got a phone on them? I, I have a question. Oh, okay. Joe's going to do it. Yeah. Oh, our town photographer. <laughs> uh, question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, this is a town special fund. And the first thing I want to know is, is SPAT, SPAT is coming through for us yet again. Thank you. But you're not earmarking it for anything beyond the general use. It's general dredging, and it was a unanimous support by the board, and it's a very diverse board, okay. everyone on the board. Right. Now, so. there's no time window for use, because you heard some of this discussion, I think. In other words... We just hope our money grows yeah. for you. Yes. <laughs> In other words, this is going to sit there in this fund, only to be used for maintenance dredging, right? Right. And dredging. It'll yep. be no, it's yep. the name of the fund is Maintenance oh, okay. Dredging right. Fund, right? Yeah, which is yes. good. Okay. That's good because it backs up right. our plea to the government to say, we do have a plan. We do want to do this. Right. We've opened this fund. There's money in it. We just need you to get the big glop out now. That, it's huge that you're giving this to us. It's yet another well, thing. Well, you know, again, and I don't want to go on too long, but, you know, Suzanne was here the night at, at the COA, and this was, um, I'd say 90% of the uh, 70 people that were here were um, uh, second homeowners, extremely interested in the shell fishing industry, extremely interested in dredging. Um, so I hope that, and I think SPAT, with the un unanimity of the board, would be very supportive in helping any fundraising activities okay. for the dredging fund. Great, uh, Justina. Um, thank you. Thank you. And I think it's fabulous that Spout's stepping up to the plate. I think we have a great um, synergy between the town where uh, the location of Oyster Fest is held and um, Spout. And it's an interesting nonprofit because you're also so good at what you do and uh, make money. So I hope we can continue this energy. And, and we do a little more than make money too, and it's more than Oyster Fest. And we, I think we, we, the educational support that we give oh. and the support for shell fishermen, I know Justine you didn't mean that, but, but you mean it that way. But um, I, I just would like to say that. I, I agree with you. I think the synergy in all in our mission is there mm -hmm. with the town. So, I agree. I'd like to second that. We we see it as a partnership. So, right. we yes. planned absolutely yeah. planned to continue that. Right. <laughs> so. Thank you. And it was a fabulous oyster fest. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you loved it. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Give this to Dan. 
Yes. Yep, we, wait, we're gonna make a motion. How are we uh, gonna do this? I move to accept a 10,000 donation from SPAT to the maintenance dredging fund. Second. All in favor, say aye. And we would like a picture for our website. Did you already take one? No, okay. So, do you Would you like to all be in the picture? Yes, or would I you think just like to have the chair be in the, be in the picture? We'll share it on our website and social media also. Yeah. So we'll uh, yeah, do the two of you want to stand oh, back sure. here and we can squeeze in or not squeeze in and then Dan can stand behind everybody? Oh, he can just be back there. Oh, oh yeah, Dan. Yeah, the kitchen tonight. Yeah. Oh, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. The kitchen yeah. tonight, so Dan is tall. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. I'll stand in front of Dan. Where's Thank Joe? Hi, Janet. Hi, Janet. Oh. <laughs> my cup so that doesn't look bad. Oh, it says for I know. That's why. Right in the middle. Yes. The yeah, let's check. The check. Yeah. Check. check. What? Yeah, the check. Oh, the check. check. Again, you hold the check. Take the glasses off. <laughs> Should I be smiling yes, at smile. it? Yes, smile. Yes, absolutely. Ah. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> we have a lot of happy moments. Sure you do. Oh, and I'm going to see you in the morning, oh, Janet. Yeah. And I'll morning. see you at 9.30. Okay, yeah. Good, thanks. Oh, okay. Is this a challenge? Good, good. Money. Yeah. No, we're, you know, this, I guess I take it a little... Uh, I want to get out of here. I get it a little personally when people say that the, uh, you know... The dredging committee is not failing. We really have good input. The same and we just keep I'm trying and trying and trying. We're going to get the hang of it. <coughs> so, Kurt, were you here when I was talking about the advisory committee? I'm sorry. Are we having a break? We can continue because we don't really need. Um, yeah. Can we keep going? I have to get up like at five. Okay. I'll get in touch. I would too. Okay. So we will continue. And thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Spat. Um, everybody, thank all the fishermen and all the shell fishermen. I have a request. Uh, all right, speaking of getting going. Yeah, my request is, could we do the discussion of economic vitality tourism later, or is there a burning thing? No. There's... I would really appreciate that. Um, that's because fine with me. Does anybody else want it? So you... if, if I can just tell you what my focus is, it'll take less than 30 seconds. So when I was hired a little over two years ago, I had to answer two questions. One was on housing, one was on economic development. And I'm thinking, I feel like we've, we haven't been able to touch on anything as far as economic development. I know um, Justina had it as two of her goals that we put on our, our goals for the selectmen for this year, but we haven't really done anything. And I just like the board to be thinking about it and whether we need to create a committee to do that, whether we need to say, okay, the group at Preservation Hall is doing it. Um, I was approached by somebody in the community who said they're hearing from a number of people who said, oh, Wellfleet sharks, I'm not gonna go there, and felt like we needed to have a positive PR response, and we have no vehicle within the town to do something like that. So I'd just like to see us think about it and create something that we can do both to encourage new business coming to town and to strengthen our existing businesses in town. So I think I've heard that the, I've talked to the people at the, um, with the Wellfleet Economic Vitality and Tourism, and they do have a lot of great ideas, and they are certainly open to anybody with ideas coming to their meetings. Do you think we want to ask them to become more official? Or they're, they're doing really well. I, yeah. I think they're doing really well. But uh, as you recall, a, um, a few meetings ago, I came forward and asked if we could use the money from Wellfleet Blossoms and the other one mm -hmm. that I don't remember, Harbor Fest, Harbor or Fest, some, yeah. something like that, and use it for um, economic vitality slash tourism. And we decided not to at that point. But I'm just, I'm kind of keep pushing you and keep encouraging you that we've We've, I'd like to see us take a more active role okay. in, in this process of really trying to encourage uh, new business. So since you've been to some of the economic development committees, um, would you like to talk to them and see if they want to morph into something more official? I'll, I'll bring it up forward or, to them. Or at least so. communicate or, um, yeah. Yeah, let me bring are, it up to them, yeah. so. Okay, thank you. Uh, Helen, you had a Yeah, a couple comment. things. Um, I'm interested in good function for these needs. I get that. 
this board has actually done a number of things without realizing that we were doing it, like the high, oh, geez, you know, the, op, the fiber optic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. There's that. There's a number of other things that, like in the last four years, they come up, and we're open to it, and we review it. Frankly, I think our very good attention and openness to this new kind of businesses coming into town is also a way of being supportive. I'm talking about the marijuana dispensaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we're doing a good job on that. I think we step up to the plate. And I am in favor of letting this group that's already functioning to communicate with them and give them support and not have yet another splinter group that's doing kind of an echo of the same thing. I think we should bolster their efforts and also be in better communication with the Chamber of Commerce, yeah. which is our main economic driver. Yeah. It's not that I think it isn't important, it is. I just think we're already functioning well and should continue to follow up the way we've been following up. Yeah, you know? Janet. Uh, Kathleen, yep. Um, I'm gonna cut off Justina because she's chomping at the bit, but um, you know, this um, loosely, um, you know, group that's meeting at Wellfleet Preservation Hall, um, economic development is part of, um, you know, Preservation's Hall go-to. Uh, so this is why they're meeting this way. But, um, and while we don't have a formal appointed economic development committee, um, we've got probably one of the strongest chamber of commerce right now. Um, being administrated by um, Lara that we've ever had. Um, small Business Saturday that happened after Thanksgiving weekend was huge in Wellfleet. If you were a restaurant and you were open for lunch, and we were, we were packed. Um, the Carol event and the tree lighting uh, in front of Town Hall in 20 to 27 degree weather um, was packed. Um, so these, the chamber is out there uh, really getting, you know, you know, people to get out and, and support local businesses. So they're, 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 you know, we'll give them yeah. all we can. So I'm meeting with Laura Henry, Laura Henry uh, in January. She's on vacation now. And one of my suggestions <coughs> with her is that we have, you know, she and other chamber people can uh, come to our to to one of our meetings and we can just share ideas and they can talk about what they want to do and things like that. So I think the town is really working well together with their with helping the new businesses and also the CDP Community Development Partnership in, in East Ham. Jay Colburn has done a phenomenal job really yeah. with outreach, teaching people how to do everything from how to get a checkbook to how to get your business online and uh, business loans, small business loans. So, no, I think it's good. So I, I agree. So we are in agreement that we'll, we'll uh, beef up the Economic Vitality and Tourism Committee if they want us to. <laughs> they want people from... And I've talked to them too. I know Justina has a comment. Yeah, to oh, I, and will, I will talk to Justine that group, is in so. charge of all of this. <laughs> well... I wouldn't call myself in charge, but it is one of my top uh, goals. I, I yeah. tend to work on one main goal at a time, and then I wanted to wait uh, to leave Dan alone during the critical dredging uh, efforts that were going on. But I do have a long list of things that I wanted to uh, check in with Dan on. Um, now we're in budgets, but I'll barge in anyways. Come in. Come and, in. Uh, I agree with a lot of what's um, said here, but I think sometimes it can help to have somebody who'll take responsibility and uh, talk to people like the Chamber of Commerce um, and join and uh, attend the atomic, the uh, economic vitality meetings and uh, begin the networking. And um, I'd like to take that on. Good. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thirty seconds later. Um, we now have the town administrator's <laughs> contract renewal. So for your information, what we do tonight is we move um, 
we vote to renew or not renew our town administrator's contract. And then I, as uh, chair, uh, direct how we're going to negotiate his contract. So first, uh, can I have a motion to vote, to, uh, well, can I have a motion to vote to renew the town administrator's contract? Um, for the sake of discussion? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is for the sake of discussion. I move that the Wellfleet Fleet Select Board vote to renew the town administrator's contract. Is there a second? Okay. Well, this isn't going right. Oh, wait. Can, oh, Janet. We'll have a second, and then we can discuss it. Or we can just discuss not. It. Yeah. Okay, you want to discuss it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, this is, I think, the, the sort of the normal. And in this case, given what I, in my opinion, find to be a wonderful experience with our town administrator, and Shasha Gabor has been with four. And the most recent one, Dan Hort, makes me happier than any of the previous three. Shasha Gabor was a film star who got married a lot if you're too young. But the normal way to do this is we have just a short executive session, the five of us. We look at his contract, which we're not so, looking at tonight. Right. right. And then we... Uh, you know, take a vote, we discuss it, we get to, you know, say all the nasty things we can't say in public, or not at all, and we walk out of there, and then we have a part in public meeting. We don't have one person negotiating. So I'm going to stop you right there, because I've done, I've talked to a number of people, a lot of people, on how to do this. I've talked to lawyers, I've talked to past town administrators, I've talked to past um, select board chairs, select people, and other knowledgeable people. And um, your memory, there's, so there's three, three things that happen. Is the first thing is we have to vote whether to renew or not renew, right? So that's just like it says right here. So we vote whether we do want him it's not about a discussion now. So then afterwards, after we take that vote, mm. then I, as chair, get to choose either a committee, but everybody else has told me that when they've had their contract uh, renewal negotiated, it usually is with just the chair. And then I bring the negotiations back to the select board, and we have um, executive committee executive meeting and discuss all of that there. So that is what has happened with the past three town administrators. It's happened with other town administrators that I've talked to and yeah, so. Question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Janet, I have a question. Is there a rush to do this? Uh, there the is contract, not a contract, excuse yeah. me. The contract okay. does not expire for the general public until June 15th, 20. 19. So I don't understand why we're, so, we're, we're uh, negotiating a contract that, um, you know, there's still six months between here and there. So a couple of reasons. Uh, number one is um, it will be after this meeting going into January, it'll be six months before his contract um, expires. Uh, we have to include his negotiations and we have to include his contract in town meeting budget which is coming up so that really has to be done by February end of February so that so that's the two months we have to in include that and we're not going to do it tonight we're going to vote to um, whether we want to renew it or not and then come January because we're not going to we're not going to have another meeting except with the finance committee so it wouldn't even be at, until the beginning of January, and <clears throat> probably not even then. So we're starting the process just so it doesn't get lost. And um, yeah, does that answer your question? Janet? It's budget time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I get it. So I'm going to make the motion again. OK. Um, I, move to, I move that the Wellfleet Select 
I move that we vote to renew the town administrator's contract. Is there a second? Well, good luck, guys. <laughs> now, wait a minute. So I can second. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this is, you just explained it very well. In other words, we're not voting on the specifics of the contract tonight. We are voting on do we want to, you know, reappoint the town administrator, and then we get to work on the contract, it, yeah. having the current contract in hand. Because this wasn't included in the packet. Right? Right. There's nothing to say. We're just voting to renew or not renew. Yeah. That's all we're doing. And there's no second. So can I assume that um, three of you don't want to renew his contract then? Can I have a, another motion then? Are we at the point we can comment? Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. all, yeah. I think here's the disconnect. Yeah. That I keep trying to wrap my mind around um, and think I get it and then don't. I think that Dan's uh, review was more than positive with a 3.66 average uh, score out of four um, with many, many, many areas of commended performance. And so certainly for that and in any number of reasons, it's in the best interest of the town uh, to renew um, uh, your contract, Dan, and retain you as our town administrator. And this is where i not positive I understand the process correctly. Uh, um, however, as with any performance review, there were important areas that surfaced in the review um, to work on, and it's my understanding the contract uh, process uh, is the right time to identify measurable goals and objectives and concrete steps to work towards achieving them. Um, every performance review process I've been part of in the private sector has done so, and I'm also interested in identifying concrete ways uh, the select board can continue to make sure it's uh, supporting you, Dan in the best way mm -hmm. we can. So again, with a, three, a stellar 3.66 average score out of four, um, it was a strong review and uh, in the interest of the town uh, to renew your contract. Um, I'm just s still having trouble wrapping my m mind around uh, the, the process of, of, of how the select board uh, fits into the whole process. Is, are there any other comments? So, so again, <coughs> number one step is to vote to renew or not renew. Okay, that's what we're voting on now. Okay, so take them separately. So, there's a motion. Yeah. Yep. Can we just put this off to our next meeting? No. I mean, just... Well, why, why does it have to be tonight? Because it's on the agenda. Well. Because we've we, talked we about it. We could postpone it, though. I'd like to go back and read his contract. Yeah. So, so you're, you're not getting the process here. I am getting the process. So I've, you can... I've negotiated you, a few contracts for town administrators, okay. so, more so than you, I believe. So, well... Okay, watch it, Jerry, okay? No, I don't have to watch anything. I'm sitting on this board just like you. Well, I, you're, I, don't, I don't want a personal attack from you. I so didn't attack. all we're doing, do you guys understand, all we're doing tonight, right now, don't even look at number two. We're looking at whether we want to renew it or not. Once we, we choose to do that, then you will have access to the contract then we can have uh, all of the um, evaluations we did. We'll have copies and you can see everybody's uh, evaluations. And then because we are discussing a legal employment salary thing, it would have to be, it just needs to be private. It's not going to be in an open selectman's meeting. Go ahead, Helen. Yeah. Um 
what to tag on to what Jerry said and to go over what you explained so well initially. What I would like before anybody goes in one-on-one -on -one and negotiates with the town administrator is for this board to look at the contract, talk about an executive session, see what we want to do or not, and we can't do that. There's no sense in working on the contract unless we approve, unless we say we want to, you know, extend it. In other words, I would like to do that sooner rather than later because there is, it is time sensitive. It does have to be on the annual town meeting budget. And it needs to be considered when we're looking at the whole budget together, which we are just, uh, we're looking down the barrels of that. So do so, you understand that we're just voting to go forward or not go forward, and if we vote to renew, then that's when negotiation, mm -hmm. you can look at the contract, you can then say, well, blah, 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 right? Yeah, or you know what? Uh, this piece of the contract hasn't been working, we want to change it, but we do that all together, all five of us in executive session, and then we can send Well, I, I beg to differ. I just, that is not what lawyers have told me, that is not what other town administrators have told me, and some of your favorite people are the town administrators that I talk to. They said it is easiest and the best, I'll even quote you some of the things. Okay, but. Uh, that it's, it is most often done, and I don't know, so you negotiate, you, you do it privately, and then it's presented to the whole select board, and then the entire select board goes into executive session and discusses that. But so this is what I was told legally to do, so I'm not really sure where the argument or the question's coming from. But here's a question, and maybe it's just I haven't either gotten the answer, which is clear to you or somebody else, but how does the person that goes in and talks with, uh, I, you know, I don't even like to personalize it, this person that we want to reappoint, how the does, the how chair, does that The chair appoints okay. it. Okay. okay, how does the chair know what to negotiate with if the chair isn't acting out of, you know, knowledge of what the board wants? Because the chair cannot make those decisions by him or herself. It's not going to be made by him or herself. So, what's so the... I, so, I was told that I should appoint and I will appoint myself as the original negotiating party. It simplifies things. Okay, I know all of you guys want your say you, you all want your say. I know that. I can actually probably even guess of what you guys would say or what questions you would have. You know, we, no, you don't, so you're, you're assuming that, you're assuming that you know what I'm gonna say, but no, I, I kind of know what people. I think that's a very judgmental Okay, statement, well, it's so. not, but you're taking it that way. So I know that we're all gonna be fair. I know we're gonna discuss this. It's just, again, I appoint, this is what I was told to do. So I don't know why, especially you two who have been on the board the whole time, mm -hmm. many years. Uh, Harry Turkanian had, had Paul Pilcher interview him. Well, and then brought it, and then you brought it before the whole board. I was not on the board then. Um, I'm assuming that actually, frankly, we can appoint you. No, I, I appoint it. I mean, that's what, that's what legally is in the charter, right? No. Oh. Or it's in the... Um, what does it say in the charter? Joe, what does it say in the charter? <laughs> so there's two uh, matters before the board as I see it. Um, the contract is the legal instrument that presently exists between the board and the administrator. The contract has an opening statement that says, whereas the town administrator is appointed for an indefinite term. And then it goes into the terms of the contract. The charter talks about removal uh, or uh, appointment. It does not talk about reappointment. It does not talk about contract renewal because when an appointment is made, it is made for an indefinite period. And within that is a contract for a finite period of time. So if the board wants direction on the contract, I would agree with what the chair has said thus far. The board needs to make a determination as to whether or not it wishes to renew the expiring contract. 
If the board chooses not to do that, you then need to go to charter because you're talking about removal. And both the contract and the charter have provisions where there are protections for the employee in such a circumstance. So I would suggest that the question before the board is as the chair has presented, shall the contract be renewed, yes or no? Once you've disposed of that question, the board can talk about any other parameters it wants. But if it's the intent of the board to not renew the contract, there are, there's at least two clauses in the contract that talk about severance and removal, and there are several sections of the charter that talk about removal. If that's not what the board is intending to do, I would suggest you make some action on the contract. I don't know what the question was, but I wanted to offer that. Thank you. Janet. Mm -hmm. If we vote to renew the contract, mm -hmm. before you would go into negotiation, you would come to the board and ask, our opinions as to what we would like in the contract. Yeah, you guys will get total... No, no, just okay. let me finish. Yeah. In other words, you're not going to go into negotiations with Dan and then come back to us and say, well, this is what I, we have done, what I've done right. with Dan. Well, it, what, yeah. I'm, what I'm asking is, before you go into negotiations, you would meet with the board. Okay, I can do it that way too. I can do it both ways. We can do it all ways. We can talk before and after. Yeah. So if it, it depends on whether the board wants to vote to renew it. But I would like for me uh, that if we vote to renew it, that you meet with the board before you go into any negotiations okay. with the town administrator so that you have a clear picture of what we would like, mm -hmm. that the members would like. I think that would be the way I would like to see it if we, if we vote to renew. So part of the issue, and, and I agree with you, okay, I just want to explain further what some of the issues might be, is if um, we talk even just um, two individuals, that it can also be construed as um, oh, it's getting late, I just forgot the word. Serial deliberations, right? So there just has to be, it has to be very clear that there can't be collusion, there can't be open meeting bylaw, anything like that. So it, it has to be very, that's one reason why one person goes in at first. But no, I hear, I, I, I understand that all of you want a say and that it certainly will be that way. You know, I assure you it will be that way. And all, Wait. I'm not finished, huh? okay. And I didn't mean to impugn your character. Okay, so, I know. Right. So Jerry and I are saying basically the same thing. And my memory of how this goes is, um, you know, the town administrator may have some things he wants changed in, change in right. his contract. Or he, after the this generic person that we're <laughs> negotiating with. And we may have some things. So we need a little executive session about that. Then... Whoever gets delegated, sure it can be you, I don't care, um, goes in, you know, with a minute. So, I Helen, I'm going to stop you again because that's... Well, wait it's a minute. Please don't stop me. Goes in, negotiates with the town administrator, and then comes back to us with the proposals, which may all be acceptance. It may be win-win across the board, not complicated. We have another little executive session, and then we vote to accept the contract or not in open meeting. Or we can just do the whole thing. The whole third step in open meeting, we could do it. But um, we need to, I agree with Jerry, and that's what I was saying before, the person who goes in, who's going to listen to the town administrator's side of the story, needs to know what our side of the story is, not just guessing. Because yeah. what we formulate together is very different, and we certainly cannot do that out of open meeting. Right. At all. So it's an initial negotiation, okay? Can so, we look at it that way? Well, when, we, when can we have our little Well, we have, to, we have to say first, we can't plan any of this first. We have to say first, are we going to renew it or not? You're getting, you're getting lost in the process. So when you say, yes, I want to renew it, 
it's with the idea that you will still have an opportunity to negotiate, say whatever you want to say, even though most of it has been said in an evaluation. Um, you know, you, you, dis, you discuss the parameters of, of a contract. You discuss pay, time off, benefits, all that stuff, okay? So um, that Chair. will be discussed, that will be negotiated after we just decide whether to renew it. When we say vote to renew the contract, it's not that the contract has already been decided. There is a think, motion on the floor. Okay, and there was a second. So all in favor of renewing Mr. Hort's contract. Okay. Yeah, we're voting. <sighs> so that was through you to Mr. Hort. Dan, that was an education in public for us. Can, can I just um, say one thing, Janet? Yes, you may. Um, my, my reluctance here is um, not about whether to renew or not to renew, but I don't have, I, I didn't understand a guarantee here to have a transparency of the process. Oh, there will be. And I yeah. want to be guaranteed that there is a transparency to this process. I think that's um, what we're all feeling, so. Yes. No, I agree, and I'm sorry if um, it wasn't, you didn't understand that. It wasn't that. explicit, it wasn't so explicit thank you. It wasn't explicit explained, but no, it's, um, you know, it's, I don't know. I guess. Forget it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Justina. Uh, well, okay. So, yes, I agree. I think that the process is, for me, has been difficult to grasp, and so now we've uh, completed uh, part one of the Excuse me. We've completed. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We've completed part one of the process, and what I heard Joe Power say was that the board had uh, can create any parameters the board wants in terms of the process after the contract is renewed. And I think that, given the difficulty of the conversation tonight and we've uh, made progress uh, rather than reopening another wrenching <coughs> discussion, we should try to get a good parameter set tonight that everybody can agree on and feel good about. So what I would like to do is now that we uh, voted to renew the contract, I will postpone the uh, direction of negotiation and probably in our next meeting in January or so, have uh, copies of the charter, copies of things that will help you to understand the process, that will support the process. But, but didn't uh, Joe just rule on the charter or explain Yeah, but the I wasn't charter? sure if everybody understood it. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I think what we'd like, what I'm hearing is that we'd like to go into an executive session for the board to uh, go over uh, the input that they want to get go over prior to the contract negotiation. Janet? <clears throat> yes. Uh, just a suggestion, if, if we haven't, I think we should all reread the charter. Yeah, I think, I think what I need to do is before present go, it. Before we go in into anything, yeah. Just yeah. reread it. No, and as I said, in January, we can, we can vote to do that, and um, I will show you what I know and what I've heard. Yeah. Do you want to say anything else, Joe? If I may for a moment, and I, I'm not sure I caught it, but um, the result of the vote was 5-0 to renew the contract, is yes. that correct? Mm -hmm. So I just think it's important that you don't bury the lead, so to speak, as they say in journalism school, that, that at least that be understood, that there was an affirmative vote by the board to renew the contract by a 5-0 um, result and to go from there. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for do. reiterating that. Um, given, I feel that this is, this is a, a large budget line item and we want to, you know, have it yeah. clear in our minds. Yeah, which, yeah. And I would like to have the contracts 
I said I would bring, we'll, yeah. at the next time, yeah. yeah but we will. I would like to, can we have this tagged on to the, our next meeting, which is a joint meeting with the FinCom? No, no, it's too soon. For what? Uh, I agree with Janet. It's, I think it's, it's Tuesday too. night, and uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, no, we can't. I don't have I'm not going to put it on the agenda. How's that? No, no, we can't do it now. But our next meeting. <coughs> no, this is separate. This is going to be you know, a separate we, meeting. We, this is going we, to be an executive we, session. So, um, so, so when there's negotiations with the police chief, the fire chief, DPW, Mr. Hort does all of that. We are the ones that negotiate his contract. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So we are not going to negotiate his contract with the finance committee next Tuesday. It's no, of course that, not. Well, then what did you just say? No, that's where we can have our executive. Oh. We're all going to be in the right. same place. So well, we tag along our, is a really vague term. You you're know? right about that. So, I don't so know, what I yeah. meant was uh, so have you want a, it before or after. Well, that's up to you. And we no, can I don't think we have enough time. And again, there's no real rush. We can do it in January. OK, let's do it in January. In the meantime, the contract isn't that long. I've got it, but where is it? I have it, too. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you've, it's the negotiation, Yeah, all that. OK. All right. OK, moving on. Mm. Uh, so we are not doing the approval of the pavement cut for Eversource because it is too cold and the, the paving, blacktop, do you call it blacktop? The top? paving plants are closed, yeah. so we're not able so to. So they can't do paving. Yeah. I actually want to make, a, yes, you may, but I want to make another comment first. So I'm sorry, Dan, if you've been given the wrong impression. I find... Um, I, f I just found this really stressful, and it must have been really stressful for you. And um, I'm sorry if I didn't present it right, but I'm also sorry that other people didn't understand it well. So um, thank you. Yeah, I. Yeah. Yes, Michelle. I would just like to announce to the the select board that SPAT would be very interested in being involved. Dan's completely aware of this, but I'd like you all to know that SPAT would love to help in any way or be involved with the plan for power in the town hall lot because we really see the need to have permanent and stable power for the future of the fest, for safety of the our attendees, and even for other opportunities in town hall. Yes, so, yeah. So, um, so just before yes. you know, things got, got yeah. engineered oh, and planned. Alf, Alf um, and Picard talked to us okay. too. I just yeah. wanted to remind you, since he wasn't here, to say that we'd be happy to be involved with that and could yeah, and potentially just support that in some way. To clarify for the rest of the board that SPAT, what Michelle just said, um, that they would offer to help pay or pay for adding an extra outlet for it so that SPAT doesn't have to use generators. And when this process is done, uh, they'll just lay extra pipe with extra lines in it, and we could use it for other events, possibly in the parking lot or whatever. It's just to boost what, what we already have. Yes, because have. I'll just elaborate that we rent a generator every yeah. year, and it's really not optimal. And that's yeah. just money that's being thrown away that we could put into some permanent yeah. infrastructure. Additionally, we use the DPW's generator that's very old, has a lot of hours on it. Yeah. and. I, from what I hear from DPW, there's no plans to replace it when it fails. So being reliant on those two pieces of equipment that aren't ideal anyway isn't really serving. And then by renting something, it's just throwing money away where we could put it into our town. Yeah, no, I so. think uh, when that comes up again, we'll explain it better. But I know many people are on board with that. Great. Thank you. So um, this was brought up by an employee in town hall, and I had absolutely agreed with a concern of mine, having been on the planning board when we were looking into the whole question of mobile phone towers and low frequency electromagnetic radiation. We need, before this transformer goes in, to have a baseline reading of that area. And you just, there, there are companies that do that. You get a good one. It doesn't cost that much but you get a baseline reading of what 
that level of radiation is before the transformer gets added. And we definitely need to do it before we get a transformer there, in my opinion. Okay. For a whole lot of reasons. Does everybody else agree with that? Um, Madam Chair, through you to Helen, I think they've already done that. It was in their original presentation. It's, I'm, I'm sort of. They, they did a, 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 an estimate of what it was going to be that in, in the original presentation yes, from Eversource. You're right about that. They did not do a reading. Okay. Well, we'll check That's on that. That's different. That's a good I remember to check that. On. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Um, anything else about that? Okay. Moving on to town administrator's report. Any comments, questions? Yeah. Kathleen? Uh, oh, Kathleen had her hand up first. Have. Okay. Kathleen went first. Okay. Uh, quick one, Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Hort. Um, on the 26th of November, you met with the Housing th Authority. Um, can you make a report to the board with regard to that meeting? Um, yeah, I have to think about what we discussed during that meeting. I think some of it related to the... Um, some of it related to how we... we had, I had some ideas to discuss with them. Uh, about funding for housing, one of which I mentioned was that Orleans had passed a 1% for housing um, ballot initiative that maybe we wanted to consider doing it. That another one was um, the idea of increasing the amount of community preservation funds that were dedicated to housing. And I don't remember what the third one, but I, I had kind of approached them about that and said, what do you think about these ideas? So they came in and we talked about them, so. Any other questions, Jerry? No. Most of my questions are a yes or a no. So uh, <clears throat> I was reading in the, the Beacon, uh, did we participate in the survey on Chapter 90 funds? Yes, we did. Good. Thank you. Uh, and that lawsuit uh, against the pharmaceuticals that I think Provincetown, East Ham, mm -hmm. so on, how come we're not part of that? I had sent out an email to the select board at one point, and no one responded, so I didn't move forward with it. Okay. I don't recall that email, but I you, since I don't have a computer. Um, can you say uh, anything about the news dealer? Um, I have no further information from the state on whether that financing was improved or not. Um, and we haven't had any further communication. Well, I've never had any communication yeah. because they haven't responded, so. Okay. And are we going to get a, an article together for, uh, or we need to discuss it more about uh, the paramedic situation that uh, I had brought up. I have talked to the fire chief about it. He likes the idea, so we're going to talk about it and try to come up with some sort of some, formula to make that happen. Yeah and, yeah, and with the attorney on yeah. that, yeah. and maybe have an article for town meeting. Yes. And the last one is, uh, how, how are you doing with the uh, applications for the assistant DPW director? Um, the position has been posted. I don't know that anything has come in yet. Um, I can check with the DPW to see if they've received anything. I saw, uh, I saw the posting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I suspect we'll have some kind of a three-member or five-member committee to do the interviewing. Yes. Well, I would like to suggest to this board, and I would hope that you would support this, that one member of that committee be Dennis Murphy. Mm -hmm. He absolutely knows construction, highways, what goes into it, and so on and so forth. So when that committee is appointed, uh, I would like to see Dennis Murphy on it. I spoke to Dennis today, and he would be more than willing to serve on a committee. What committee? Uh, the uh, committee to... Um hire a new oh. assistant DPW director. Uh, Joe? Um, just as an update to Jerry's question, um, I checked our mailbox for human resources, and this evening we've received one application 
for assistant DBW. So we'll get more, but that was the first one that's come in so far. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's it. Um, I'm done. Uh, anything else on town administrators? Yes, just um, uh, quickly to Jerry's point. Um, uh, I learned all too well when I was on the water commission how great how much Dennis knows um, from his uh, often pointed comments to me. So I would support that he's uh, run, running his own asphalt company and uh, knows a great deal. I think he'd be great to work with too. He's he's fun. Um, a couple of things. Uh, on number two, the fiscal matters, the <coughs> 2020 budget books. Um, I'm revealing my inner nerd, but this was like an early Christmas present. <laughs> and that one little line, I'm sure, on the report uh, doesn't um, quite do justice to how much went into this. And I wanted to thank you for this. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, really thrilling to me. <laughs> To, to, to get and then I um, also wanted to ask quickly uh, uh, how I know recruiting is always difficult how we're doing with the assistant town clerk I think we have seven to eight um, applications so far breaking news we have ten ten mm -hmm. awesome yeah. as of this evening good job applications Okay, and when's our new secretary going January to start? January 14th. January 14th. Yes. Great. Okay, anything else about the town administrator's report? Can I tell uh, Janet, can mm -hmm. I just go back a minute? Sure. On the, uh, the town clerk, uh, I thought that you were going to handle all that. Under new reorganization that was brought to us, it was my understanding that you we're going to handle that, and that we were going to save $35,000. It seems now if we're going to hire a new town clerk or an assistant town clerk, that $35,000 is out the window, and then some. So um, it's not, and this was the plan from day one. The reorganization that the select board approved earlier this year um, created assistant department heads for the collector, accountant, treasurer, and clerk's office. This was the only position that hadn't been filled. Um, you may recall that Miriam Spencer served in the dual roles of assistant town clerk, assistant town treasurer, but the reorganization split them um, so that each department has an assistant department head. This conforms with uh, my appointment as assistant town administrator as presented by Mr. Hort earlier this year. <coughs> the savings has been achieved and will continue to be achieved in fact, what you're getting is you, you'll you have um, consistent and constant service in all the departments, including now the town clerk's office. So the savings are still there, um, and, and this is the plan that was presented all along. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Moving on to topics for future discussion. Janet. Kathleen. Oh. Um, yep. Through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Hort, and I want to specify um, that these are not agenda items for the future. Um, it did come up last night at the uh, climate uh, change meeting that the forum hosted here um, that we are uh, still have not completed the 28 comprehensive plan, um, and I would like that to, uh, you know, be discussed at some point in time. Um, my second question, and I've been going back and forth with this, Dan, for almost uh, for over a year. Um, where are we at with regard to the Masons and the dispute over the property line at the bank and Commercial Street parking lot? And the reason I ask this is because it looks like hell down there. The fence has fallen down. And uh, are they still... So this is not an agenda item? Would no. you like it put on a future agenda? No. Because this is not the purpose for future discussion, to have a conversation back and forth okay. of something that's not on the agenda. So if you would like it on the agenda, I'd be happy to put it on a future agenda. And maybe bring them forward to us, yes. Mm. Anyone? Oh, I, I also okay. wanted to suggest at this time um, that maybe you would consider a stipend for training um, the new executive assistant uh, and increase Jeannie Mack's salary because she'll be training that individual. Um, we've done that before with the shellfish department. So if you guys want that as an agenda item, we can 
also have that discussed. That would not be in the union contract, but I can put yeah. it on the agenda if you would like. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. you done, Kathleen? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. That, thank you for highlighting that because it's a need. And like Harry Tukanian, we discussed it when Harry Tukanian helped Dan. You know, it's yeah. you. You got to do that. Okay. So, um, guess what? It turns out this is a future agenda item. Um, we have select board policies. And in order to have a new one or change one, there's a little process. It's in the policies. It's called policy on policy. I can send you all the link, no discussion, by email. And it's a series of agenda items. Uh, we bring it up. Um, Arguably, I'm bringing it up now, but not really. Yeah, I am bringing it up now. Okay, then so, we yeah. get a draft. So what would you like the agenda item to be? Well, it turns out that the department, the health department, the conservation health department of the DPW have been scrupulously following recommendations from the Board of Health and the CONSCOM that follow a policy that those two, those three groups, the, the two, you know, the, the two department heads, you know, the two departments and the two uh, boards drafted a really good don't use pesticides on town owned property policy for the select board because we can't do it in a general bylaw or in an environmental regulation because of the state's omniscient pesticide board of the state doesn't allow us to do that, but we can have a policy and it's already been, you know, followed. This came to this board before so I was I'm on I'm just going to interrupt you. And we again. need to, I would like to have. So just, you just want to put a pesticide policy on the agenda, a selectman's pesticide policy on the next agenda or in the future. Yes, I would okay. like to start the process for having it be a policy and to use the text which those two, those three groups drafted. It's excellent. Okay. Yep, I know. Okay, good. Yeah. So that's the first thing. And then it turns out that, and this happens more often than it should, and we have to do something about it. And we need to, I think, send a message. We can have an agenda item about it. But it turns out that we have one set of environmental regulations that are very up to date and they're in the CONSCOMS environmental regulations thing. And then we have another set in our general bylaws and they don't look the same to me. And that has to be figured out and we are not the ones to do it, but I'm highlighting it. And I would like to send a directive or a recommendation which we could meet on when we look at them next to each other to the Health Conservation Department because this is not good because general bylaw is heavy, regulation can be changed by CONSCOM. That's the second thing. And then the last thing came up last night at the forum meeting. It turns out the planning board has to, in order for us to save money and qualify for the second block for our solar array, you know, um, benefits, mm -hmm. the planning board should really have already had a hearing and you know, okayed it, and they haven't. Uh, and uh, uh, are we talking about the solar array at the landfill? Yes. In other words, the planning board has to approve it, yeah. and they haven't sat on it. And I would like to send them a nudge. Um, Maybe Kathleen. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I think they've been nudged a lot, but uh, and they're and they're on it, and that's why they've nudged two people, or at least one person, to be on their board. Madam Chair, but um, go ahead. Um, well, that's what we heard last night, and I was concerned, but I think there's always two sides to every story, and it's yes, my understanding there that there are uh, critical um, pieces of the process that the Energy Committee hasn't uh, finished. We'll let Joe, well, actually, we can't talk about it because it's an, right. agen it's an agenda yeah. item. Right. I um, <laughs> but uh, Kathleen, were you going to say something? Same thing. Oh, okay. Um, there's a backstory and there's two stories to that, mm -hmm. but it is in the process. It's just a long process, especially when you don't have quorums. Um, okay, anybody else for future agenda? 
I should have said this under announcements, but tomorrow in East Ham, I just got like an email two or three days ago and didn't open it up. Tomorrow at the East Ham Library from four to six, the CDP and the Cape Cod Commission um, are doing a, uh, a, a group you know, meeting and it's a listening group, so it's not going to be you're not going to be lectured or anything, but just about um, yeah, rural community life, and um, it's probably pretty good to go to. Rural planning. Rural planning. So input. I am going to go. I decided to go. I f forgot about it, so um, I'll so pick you up. Four to six. East Ham Town. East no East Ham Library. Um, okay. Anything else? Uh, correspondence vacancy, I think we can slide oh. to that. No, okay. Yeah, I had a really good experience because there were the incredibly good minutes from the parking task force. Yeah. They're in the yeah. file and I really recommend, first of all, it's good reading. Secondly, I recommend just going and reading it because I learned things and I was dazzled, so. Um, it's in there. Yes. Did you take them? Is that why you're looking at no, me? No, parking no, no Wayne Clough takes them. Only Clough? you would be so excited about yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you number her Read minutes. Read them. Read them. I will. Only yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. It's a good task for us. Okay. Um, minutes. Okay. Ellen. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, Right at the top of page one, um, the assistant town administrator was also there, and typically we add him. Um, minutes were great. Uh, yeah, page three, top of the page, that paragraph at the top of the page. Um, this is minor, but it's a fact. Uh, third line down. Um, the Ragnar events isn't pursuing their, you know, thing because of problems with access through other Cape Towns. They weren't having problems with other Cape Towns. Um, and Wait, then page uh, four. Um, well, actually, it was with other Cape Towns, Helen. Yes, but it was, right. that was the problem. It wasn't just this general problem with other Cape Towns from their point of view. That's why I amended it. Fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it was the, they couldn't. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, okay, page four. Let's just zoom right through this. Um, the big paragraph that starts with beach sticker fees. Um, these two fine people from Maurice's campground they said, the last line, they said they did not want to take advantage of summer visitors or risk turning them off to vacationing in Wellfleet. And the, it was, there were two different separate thoughts. Farther down the page, oh, there's a single line here that starts with my name. And I didn't ask that my letter defining municipal employee be amended. I mentioned the, her memo to the board with, the, with a definition of special municipal employee, a term used in one of the documents presented for approval that night. You know, it was, they wanted us to approve that. And that is, now five has, oh, five has something. Um, <coughs> Wilson uh, suggested sending a memo to department heads and chairs informing, reminding them, blah, 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 that part remote participation is not currently allowed under the open meeting law, and then strike the sentence that says basically the same thing just above that. And uh, Kathleen Bacon, Bacon suggested including the recycling committee in that discussion Dash, they had been asking for that for years, the carry on and carry out, and I think that's an important documentation of the fact that they had been asking for it for years, and that's it. That's all my amendments. Who had been asking for it? Recycling. The recycling committee. Okay. Yeah, all right. 
I move, if it's okay, yes. I, I move to approve the minutes of Tuesday, November 27th, 2018, as amended. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you all. Um, I move adjourn. to adjourn. Yes. Is there a second? What is this? Is there a second for a journey? Yes, second. second. Yes. All Out of favor. here. So moved. Thank Helen, you. Thank you again for all the hard work you do on our minutes.